Give me a moment. <clears throat> Give me a moment, it's happening. This link is happening with the YouTube. Jack, before we start off, while you are trying to get the link up, yeah, uh, I'll have the breakout rooms with uh, which uh, Sonia has suggested. Yeah, it's been done. Uh, I'll great. make her the host. Uh, she has to make the yeah. after that. Great, great, great. I'm I'm good to go. Just let me know. I think we are good to go now. Yeah. Okay, I think I'll formally start at this thing. Welcome everyone, and a very good morning and a Saturday good. morning. No. Before we uh, go to our the keynote uh, speakers, rather uh, the performers, rather in this case, uh, I'd like to just introduce myself. I'm Dipanjali Leka. I'm secretary at the Northeast Writers Forum. For those who are not aware of it, you know uh, the Northeast Writers Forum was uh, established way back in 1996, restarted in 1997. Made by uh, it was uh, for a group of you know like uh, men and women who were interested in writings and poems and you know short stories and novels and that sort of a thing, and over the years it has uh, become what it is now. We have got some of the most eminent you know like writers, authors, you know like and uh, poems uh, with a huge number of awards uh, under uh, the thing. Uh, we got uh, a lot of partnerships. We got a lot of Saita uh, Academy, which has brought me there. It's uh, one of them. Our today, you know, like uh, the performer or the, uh, the the keynote speakers rather, uh, is uh, Dicom is also uh, a founder member out there. Before I go formally to his uh, bio and all, uh, just on a personal note, he has been in this for a very, very long time. A, a personal friend of mine, and like he aptly puts it, you know, like a brother for mother the mother. We have been in this, you know, for a long, long time back, theater particularly. His father was in theater. He himself was there for a very, very long time. Uh, done it on a number of productions himself. Directed in a very young age, while well, he's still young, and probably one of the youngest directors right now. Uh, and uh, so I believe, you know, like uh, that uh, the participants will be definitely be benefited by this. This Northeast Writers Forum, the pension, we had actually uh, formulated this particular uh, the brand out there to uh, do a number of uh, workshops. We have already done workshops, you know, in uh, writing, uh, the, uh, I mean, like uh, for uh, story writing and, you know, like uh, fiction and other than we did workshops on poems also. We did workshops on script writing for the movies. And this is one of the things where, you know, like drama was definitely left. And uh, so hence, um, we are starting with this. Uh, before I go uh, to formally uh, uh, to everyone, you know, like I'd like to request everyone uh, to kindly mute your uh, mics. A video can be on, but definitely mute your mics. Uh, mostly questions we would prefer if you would put it in the chat box. Um, Sonia and Ekoma, they will take your questions out there if anything has to be there. Uh, let me go uh, to the formal this thing of it, you know. Welcome, uh, Dikom. You know, uh, I'll read your bio out there. So it's quite an impressive and landy one at that. Dikom Satyaki Dikom Bhuya is a fellow who truly loves art. Uh, he is known for his extensive experience in all the areas of theater production. He's a TEDx speaker. He is also the founder director of the leading theatre group, uh, The Passion Collective. Congratulations for that, Tikam. Thank you. Mr. Bhuyawad hey. also, in fact, proven his uh, creative excellence, especially in the stage, since a very early uh, age, with more than 25 stellar production under his belt. One of the first professional English anchors in the region, he has acted and directed numerous plays and short uh, films. Still one of the youngest field uh, in, of uh, in the direction for the past two uh, decades in the region where it comes to English theater. is also the founder member of our Northeast Writers Forum. 
compelled by his passion for acting. He's also acted in the myriad of TV production and Asmus feature films, Miss in China being his uh, latest release. Uh, as a former journalist, he was a reporter with The Telegraph, Notice File, CNN, DD1, and DD International. A trained Western classical uh, fiddle player and a music critic, he's also the first correspondent from the Notice India for magazines like mm -hmm. the Roxbury Journal, The Sun, The Rave, and Kanek, and also doubled as a guest vocalist and lyrics for the band in the early 90s. Mr. Buyan was also known as a notable theater and film critic for his immense uh, knowledge on film and theater as a subject. With a master's in linguistic, he went on to serve at the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Guwahati, as an assistant scientist, uh, like you said, Department of Computer Science and English, uh, Engineering. Uh, presently, he's working in his creative uh, projects with uh, many leading institutes of the country. He's a mentor at the Royal Global School as an adjunct faculty at the Royal Global University, a guest lecturer in the field of communication at the Tata Institute of Social Science and the National Institute of Personal Technology, amongst many others. Some of his flagship production uh, was the Street and uh, Desire, uh, The Virtuous Bugler, It's to His Own, Where There is a Will, A Woman, Prohibited, Animal Forum, 30 Days in September, and Mercy Covid. This was, of course, was done in uh, collaboration with others. But after going solo, uh, he has also done uh, uh, amazing, uh, you know, uh, plays like uh, the Romeo and Juliet, the Sex Fair Wallers. Chitti uh, was uh, uh, the, of uh, his uh, uh, the thing of uh, just letters, you know, uh, adaptation of just letters. Then uh, uh, who is Manto? Then uh, there were um, Tales in the Park and so many others and counting. So welcome, Dikom. And before I uh, hand it over to you, I also we also got you know like uh, to assist him, you know like a very pretty and talented you know like Sonia Bhattacharya from Shillong. Uh, see, Sonia Bhattacharya is a passionate musical actor, logger featured in the Deep Passion Collective production, apart from television and film. Sonia is uh, accustomed to the demanding state, uh, state states and is uh, backed by a powerful temper. She leads the worship at the church and writes her own music plays and short film scripts known for artistic integrity. Uh, integrity. She's also a classical theater. Uh, she also is a YouTuber, you know, like what's quite popular out there and I've been in many television uh, programs uh, which I have seen. Welcome, Sonia. Now, uh, I think without much ado, you know, like I think I'll hand over the stage to you and uh, Dikom, you and Sonia out there. Uh, Sonia, you will have to unmute yourself. Your uh, mic is uh, uh, over to the yeah. yeah, Thanks uh, so much, yeah. Mr. Decker. Very formally addressing him as the secretary of the forum. What a delight it's been to be here this morning. I totally understand the timings on a Saturday morning, especially during the festive time, despite the airy emptiness looming large. But I must also thank the Northeast Writers Forum, Penchant, the officials for, for making this happen here in Guwahati. I must also put in my thanks for the very bright and talented uh, co-actor of mine, Sonia Bhattacharya, who's been in the productions and uh, for, for being able to go ahead and sail this morning on this workshop. And Rashmi Nursery, who actually made it very clear in the beginning that you might as well say yes to this and let's go ahead. My brothers in the forum and sisters and especially special mention for creating this forum what it is today. Dhruva Hazarika, very fondly we call him Donda for you know getting that forum up then and uh, sailing it to what it is today. Thank you so much Writers Forum for getting this up. And good morning to all the participants who've joined us despite the weekend. And uh, I would begin by just making a line which very, goes very close to my heart personally. I, to let you know at the very outset, I am not a very trained theater professional, although my love for theater has been immense. I would like to begin by just saying a line and then I'll leave it to Sonia to start off. And then again, we will go back and forth, but act the way you would like to be and soon you'll be the way you act. This is a line which I've always loved. 
out of the master performer, writer, poet, and singer in Leonard Cohen. And uh, at this moment, I seek blessings from my seniors in the field of creative arts and, uh, uh, and a few other people who I will share very soon as the day progresses in the workshop. But I must tell you that please be ready for surprising moments. Sonia itself uh, is in a very nice mood today and uh, you will get to know more about her as and when she takes up this exercise today, this morning. And uh, I for one must also tell you and share with you all that I've done workshops in various places over the years and it's almost been 25 years with the Passion Collective. However, this actually is my first stint at a workshop on theater in the virtual setup. I was, I can't tell you how fond I am towards this craft. And especially when you meet them in the morning, we normally start the workshops very early. And uh, some of them stay with us and, you know, we go on for about seven days, but this time when they said that it's going to go up virtually because of the pandemic, I was a little skeptical initially <laughs> till the courage shot up with uh, Sonia saying yes uh, to, you know, to this workshop to help me with all the technicalities and supporting the entire cause of theater. Thank you so much, Sonia, once again. And that, so we thought that we will try and discuss, try and give you examples, try and take you through a lovely journey called theater. And keeping in mind that we'll take up a few, um, few areas, like say trust, the fantastic art of listening, the sense of timing, how you develop trust in this art form, and most importantly, the activity that uh, we are not very cautious, I think, because in the past uh, years that I've asked a lot of young people, young and old, about what do you think about your breathing? Well, there's not much of a dialogue happening then. So that is one aspect we will try and work out for this workshop. And for everyone who's taken out time to be a part of our happiness, I thank you once again, all of you, from the core of my heart this morning. And uh, I pray for all the souls we lost for the pandemic. And uh, not forgetting that we have to be cautious in every step we take to keep the entire world green, healthy, and happy. Over to Sonia, take it away from here, and we will keep interacting in between. Thank you once again, everyone being a part of our happiness. Sonia. Yeah. A very good morning, everyone. Such an honor to be here. And I'd just like to first um, express my heartfelt gratitude to the Northeast Writers Forum that's had such a rich history of more than two decades. And um, also Penchant for putting something like this together. I think the lockdown has uh, really made a lot of us very lazy. And I feel like this is such a good way to break out of that and get our creative juices churning once again. So I thank the Northeast Writers Forum and Penchant for doing this. And I feel like it's not just going to be a workshop, but it's going to be a learning experience for all of us, not just for the participants, but also for us who are the speakers for this workshop. Shop. I like Sir said, it's a new venture, so it's a new experiment, and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll teach us how to cope up with the pandemic in a whole new way, in a creative way. I think that's what artists have always been called to do. So um, I think uh, Dikom Sir needs no introduction. So I'd just like to get you guys a little acquainted with who I am, because we'll be meeting this way every morning for the next uh, two days. So I thought it's good for you guys to get acquainted with who I am and where I come from and how I developed the uh, interest towards theater and acting. So firstly, I just wanna say that I believe that people are not just skin and bones. We are our experiences, we are our ideologies, our heart, our joy, our quirks. I think all of that makes us human and it's what differentiates us from another person that we know. And so I have this ideology and some people may say that I don't have an ideology, which is an ideology in itself. But uh, this is what I believe in, that uh, we've been created by a creative God and hence we all have a creative gene in the inside of us. 
somewhere, somehow, we all have this ability to create. Uh, the way you make your bed in the morning, the way you dress up, the way you eat a meal, um, and then, of course, the more organized forms of art like music and theater, but somewhere in different ways, we're all creating. So uh, whether you've been a part of a theater setup or um, whether you've been on stage or not, you're here for the right reason because we're all creatives and we've been born to create. That's, that's my perspective. So I'm so glad that we're all here for that today. Um, so yeah, a little bit about me. I thought let's just make this morning a little less mundane. So I have a few things that I wanted to show you before I, I start and we actually get into the more theoretical parts of theater. Uh, so I started, uh, I was, I'm, I'd call myself an accidental actor. You know, I, I just happened to stumble upon this art form and I really enjoyed it. So the first time I got on stage was at the age of eight. And I did this play called Doll's Hospital. And I had a very, very, people would call it a rather insignificant role. And I remember I was a wooden doll. Okay, and I remember I had just one line. And the, and the line was, not today, sir. That's it. And for me, that was the most important line. And I felt like I was holding the entire show because of that line. So I said it with everything I had in the inside of me, full energy and, you know, full flamboyance, not today, sir. And, you know, and I, I was just faithful with that little line that I had. And I believe if you're faithful with the little, you'll be given much more. And so the, the year after that, I got a slightly bigger role and I somehow managed to find the clip. And I thought, why not make you guys uh, acquainted with the kind of things I've done and maybe make you laugh a little as well this morning. So uh, I hope this will work. Yeah, that's me. I should stop it there. Yeah. Sounds so good. Right. So uh, that was one of the first times I got on stage and I thought I'd share it with you so that we can break the ice. And hopefully uh, maybe some of you will turn on your videos after watching that embarrassing video of myself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how it started. And then it went on, started doing a few more plays. Uh, Peace Child by Oscar Wilde was one play that I did. I was the bird. And then I kept doing a few more plays. And then finally, the recent ones I've done was, of course, with my mentor, the Kamsa. And uh, we did two plays. Uh, we did one on the life of Manto, Sadat Hassan Manto. And the other one was called Park Bench Blues. So, um, yeah, it's been a very, very interesting journey. And I've learned, I've known the Kamsa personally, I think, just for about two years now. But... What he's taught me in these two years is more than I've learned in the past how many X, Y, Z years that I've lived. So I'm so honored to have met him. And uh, hopefully we will be not just teaching you, but also learning from you as we interact during this workshop. So thank you so much once again, all of you for taking our time, waking up early in the morning during a lockdown and coming for this workshop. Let's, let's have fun together. So over to you, sir. Hey, great, Sonia. That, that was nice. That was a great kickstart. And uh, thank you once again for making it so very lively for all of us. I was, uh, I was wondering that from this phone of mine, if I could go into my laptop quickly, I actually wanted to take a quick look at, uh, at the people who've joined us and uh, if they have, do you get to see them in your screen? Uh, yes, you do, but they have to turn their videos on for that. Yeah, let me let me try and just get onto my machine quickly. Because... So right now we just have uh, Miss Shilaja who's turned on. Yeah, she is very. Sweet. Thank you so much for that. I see her messages popping up. That's another very good thing. Yeah, very encouraging. very encouraging. But yes, uh, I. I, thought, I, I, I uh, is that a fantastic echo on my voice? Oh dear me. I, I think I am the troublemaker. 
Let me turn this off. Decom, uh, if you keep uh, two devices on, the interlooping of the sound happens. So you yeah, have to yeah. turn one device off and keep the other device on. Either one of them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to turn off one device. That's right. I just I just managed that. Yeah. So I must quickly tell you all before we start off, we normally what we do in person is like I said, we start off early. Then we get people to relax. And I'm sure on a Saturday morning, thanks for like people who joined. It'll be nice if you all can, you know, open up your screens. And uh, although I may not be able to watch you all. But it'll be nice if you can uh, if you can turn on your screens and let's start off actually the day with uh, what the actual power of breathing is all about. And I'm I'm sure that'll loosen you up and then we can carry on with the day. But I must tell you how important this act is. Like I said in the very beginning, that when you ask people about are you aware of your breathing. A lot of people somehow say, no, we are breathing. But uh, do you realize that uh, the breathing changes your personality? Person's emotions keep changing. If you're upset or angry, you breathe differently. If you are in love and you suddenly fall in love or you trip in love, it's your breathing pattern is different. And your breathing again changes if you experience terror. Suddenly, if you see a snake, what happens? Or you see a tiger in a jungle, you're taking a walk. Well, you, you'll say that I cannot tell you this because I, we haven't experienced that so far. But if you have encountered a snake, and if you, I love snakes, but if you haven't, then what will happen is your breath might just, breathing might just stop for a while. Uh, now connect uh, your breathing to a certain rhythm and that's exactly how important it is for a theater person. And uh, someone asked me of late that uh, what do you think you've done over 25 years in this field that you have started directing? I said I'm still trying the exercise of taking a play forward. And someday I'll be able to, you know, direct. That is the idea. But I, I told them that, you know, I want my entire team, not just the actors on stage, but from the person who's handling the sound, the light, if the music is going live, then the technicians who handle the screens, the sets, the makeup artists, all the departments that you can think of. I said that we try to breathe together from the word go. And as it is, I give away the production just on the first day of the play to the team and it's no longer mine. And that's where I tell them that let's breathe together from now on. And if that can be achieved, well, I think nothing better than, you know, than production of that, whatever, you know, whatever you see on a performing area. But yes, of late, with a little experience that I have gathered in various places that uh, we have succeeded a bit towards breathing together. And we start that count, we close our eyes, we breathe in and we breathe out and we breathe in and we do that for a couple of minutes until we realize that we maintain that rhythm till production sees the end of the last line and the lights are down and the curtain's called and then we relax. Same happens in the next few days of the performance. So that's, that's exactly how important breathing is all about. So we will touch that, upon that very soon. And, uh, and when you tense, and it's very nice if all of you, if all of you can you know, relax your minds and relax your body for these two days, for the time that we're together, because uh, some of you might be able to realize what I'm trying to say and connect because tension tightens your muscles, especially the ones you don't want to get tightened. And uh, that's why, you know, a lot of techniques, 
I'm not getting into those te fantastic techniques of, you know, uh, Sanford, Meissner, Stanislavski and the likes. Let's keep them, let's keep the masters uh, at that level and that position. But just think of a simple things like breathing, tension for that matter. I always remember, uh, you know, even Sonia will agree that, you know, if you come to the rehearsal space, you can, you should leave your tension behind and leave all your stress behind. So that it's, um, you know, so that it, one can make out that you are actually listening and delivering. I know that it's the first, uh, first day, it's me doing a lot of, you know, monologue. I hate this myself. I like a lot of dialogue happening as it is. But uh, then just to get you into that mold, I thought this would be a nice experience to share. And uh, uh, like I said, if you have the tension thing, there's the breathing pattern doesn't, you know, doesn't fall into place as expected. And that's when you are easily spotted. I have had two parallel lives, like I said in the beginning, when you, not, you guys were not attending. And I have had a certain kind of, uh, you know, a lifestyle which, uh, which is not very usual. And then I have to undergo a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Changes in me to, you know, get into this mold where I am presently. But then in between, I was also diagnosed with, you know, a kind of uh, a stress pattern, which I try to avoid. And then I was told that I have a very rare personality in that I am FJ personality person, which is, introverted, intuitive, the feeling and judgment. I, I don't know how many of you are aware of the INFJ personality, but that's what the Myers-Bridges personality types. But we're not very easy to get along. However, just to take that tension part there, you don't realize how important it is when you relax your body, which I want all of you to do at the moment. And uh, I will again try to request, I will, uh, I will come to that the breathing pattern, but uh, it's nice if uh, Sonia, if you're there still, do you think? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes, yeah. Do you think we are sailing onto that? Are, are we all in the same page and we're sailing okay so far? I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Can we, can we, what about the people uh, who are present in the, you know, in our set, in our workshop today? Can we uh, hear? Someone say together Y E S after the count of three. If we all together, that give you the time to you know unmute yourself. But are we on the same page and are we okay this morning? Yes, 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 oh, yes. 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 Come, absolutely. Oh my dear! And at the count of three, can we hear a yes together? One, two, and a three. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> You already made my day. Huh? That's that. <laughs> now, can I request all of you this morning to maybe, I don't know, I hate to say this, but if you can rise and put your hand on your bread basket. And, uh, and if you know where your diaphragm is, <laughs> place it there and try to breathe in. And Sonia, will you take it from here? Yeah. Sonia is a voice artist. She sings as well. Um, so it'll be nice if she takes it from here on the breathing exercise that you try to do. And, uh, and you are, I must tell you this, that uh, theater does no harm. And you are in a very safe place. And that uh, these human activities don't really hurt anyone or anything except for its carbon footprint, but that's okay for now, since we are all indoors. And uh, <laughs> how we've been harping towards going and attending a performance <clears throat> live till we are now virtually agreeing to start off with a little exercise on your breathing so that you're aware. And uh, I must tell you, Sonia will now guide you in the process of breathing in and I will again take it after she ends a bit with another two small pointers. And just let's not forget that it's a part of what makes us very human theater. Sonia. 
Absolutely. Thank you, sir. So uh, like sir mentioned already that breathing is a very, very important part of not just theater, but if you want to even be a good public speaker or you want to sing, you know, breathing is very, very important. Um, so a lot of times we're actually breathing the wrong way. So whenever we're asked to inhale, we actually stop, uh, suck our stomach in. Whereas the opposite is actually supposed to happen. So when we're supposed to inhale, your stomach's actually supposed to expand. And when you exhale, your stomach is supposed to, you know, it's supposed to contract. So that's the right way of breathing. So uh, can we just put our hands on a diaphragm region? And as you breathe in, let's just try to do this. Let's inhale together. One, two, three. And you exhale. And your stomach should contract. So let's try this again. Yeah, let's inhale once again. And you exhale. So this actually helps to strengthen your diaphragm as well. And we've done this in singing also. It makes singing a much more simpler process. Of course, this is not something that we can only do today and ace it. So it, like any other exercise, it has to be something that we keep at and do daily. So hopefully um, all of you who are participating in this workshop will continue to do this every day as well. Um, so I have read this really interesting quote, which says that the voice is the most perfect musical instrument. And this was um, said by one of the most popular composers. His name was Arvo Peart. And that's, how he, that's what he said, that the voice is the most perfect musical instrument. So if you play an instrument, or perhaps you've seen someone play it, you know that an instrument can be tuned and you can make it sound in, in different ways. It can sound different. An acoustic guitar can sound very different when played by different people in different styles. So same way, you can actually train and tune your voice as well, right? Um, so I'll, I'll just share a little experience with you. If some of you think, oh, I don't have a good voice or I wasn't a singer or I'm not a singer, I don't have God's gift and all of that. Well, you can actually train your voice to a great extent. So I remember being in school and auditioning for a musical. And uh, the, the only thing that, you know, the lady who was taking the audition told me was, kindly do not sing in public ever. Do anything in life, but don't ever sing live. Do something else. And I, I, I couldn't sing in the musical because I was able to act. Um, somebody was doing the singing part for me and I was just lip syncing. But that really hurt me somewhere. And when someone tells you you can't do something, you should run after it even more because there's nothing you can't do. That's what I've discovered about the human body and about the human, the way humans have been created. We can do anything actually when you set your mind to it. And so I began to take a few vocal lessons and I started to do a few warm ups. And eventually I felt like my voice was beginning to get polished. I, the, the lady who took the auditions wasn't wrong. My voice was terrible at that point. But with training and exercises, you can actually change your voice and make it sound a lot more better than it does right now. So there is one particular vocal warm up that I do every day that I just wanted to share with you. So I'll just play it for you. It's a long warm up. It's about five and a half minutes. We will not be able to do the entire warm up, but um, can you all see the screen? If thumbs up, if you can see the screen. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. So this is how it goes. I'll, I'll send the link of this video on your chat box so that if you're interested, you can try this out at home as well. So it goes this way. We start with a hum. We are starting with a hum. Can you do it with me? Come on. to make your voice vibrate at the right place. You learn how to uh, control your uh, vocal tract, which is very important when it comes to how you want to make your voice vibrate, the reverberation, which is so important. And so, yeah, this is a warm up exercise that really helps me. And I'll be putting down the link on the chat box in a while. So um, 
certain, of course, now if we talk about theater, I think of course, sir would be the better person to talk about this, but just a little input since we're talking about voice. Now, um, you know, verbal communication has always been a very important part of theater, right from the time it started in Greece. Um, when, it, when we're talking about the amphitheaters, the way hymns were recited, it's always been verbal. Of course, we do have non-verbal theater now with mime and clowning and ballet and stuff like that. But um, mostly verbal communication has always been a very, very important part of theater. So a um, few things that are important is, for example, timber of your voice. That means what's the quality of the sound you're making? Is it mellow? Is your voice silky? Is it, is it light? Is it dark? That's what we call the timber, the quality of sound. And then we also have the tone, which is very important for us who are interested in theater. For example, it's not just what you say, but how you say it. For example, I can say, I hate you. I can say, I hate you. Or I can say, I hate you, yeah. So the minute you're, the way you say it, the meaning changes. Whenever I say, I hate you, it's like a more friendly, oh, I hate you, you know? But when I say, I hate you, I, I mean it from my heart, I hate you. So the same line can be said very differently depending on the tone of your voice, the, the way you modulate your voice. So that's another thing that we have a few activities lined up for you. So we'd love it if um, some of you are sporting enough to turn on your videos because we will, I think, eventually be having a few activities if I'm not wrong, sir. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And, so, uh, um, and, and Sonia, before we, you know, uh, do you want to add something more to the breathing? Because I have a small thing to ask everyone to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think you should, yeah, yeah, so uh, what Sonia was try trying to tell you was exactly how important uh, breathing is and also your timber. And I'll, I'll just add to what Sonia said. Now, suddenly in a crowd, if uh, Sonia hears a voice saying that, hey, Sonia, and without looking back to the direction of the voice, if she thinks that, oh, that's Decom calling me, that's the recognition of the timber. Yeah. The so it is, it plays a very important role. And these are, you know, these are things that strikes your mind and, you know, deep within. Because you don't know that you haven't seen the person and you recognize the voice pattern. And that is not the voice. That is actually the timber that you connect with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now all of you who are present here this morning, if you can just... Uh, it's like a martial artist you know, taking his stance, like, you know, if you can stand relaxed with your, with your feet apart, something like, something like, you know, if you can stand up and, you know, you know, get into a position which you're free, like you don't stress anywhere. You like, um, you know, not stressing like your neck muscles very much. Neither are you stressing any part of the body, but you're taking a comfortable stance and uh, then something like this, and you can close your eyes, everyone. And then breathe in where your, your you know, diaphragm and stomach expands. And then when you release, it goes deep within, deep inside. Yeah? So now to get into that little rhythm of breathing, which I thought I will just take up today. So, if you all are ready, I guess you all are ready. Yeah. So it will just guide you through a certain rhythm pattern here. So when you breathe in, just count five. So one, two, three, four, five. I obviously can't breathe and take the count together. But if I say one, two, three, four, five in a certain pattern, you were supposed to take your breath in. Then the next one, two, three, four, five that I will say, you're supposed to hold your breath deep inside here. And the next third one, two, three, four, five, you're supposed to release the air, okay? Now with that, and if you, like Sonia said that it's nice if you can do this every day. And it's so nice to spend some quality time with yourself. And that's another thing that I'll come to after I finish this breathing pattern with you, all of you. And I'll exactly tell you what I got to hear when I asked someone that when was the last time you spent time with yourself. Anyway, so I will give you the count. And then consciously, you will try to get a rhythm into your breathing. 
So like I said, quickly let me repeat. One, two, three, four, five. The first time I say it, you're supposed to breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. You're supposed to hold it. And one, two, three, four, five, release it. Okay? That's the first step. We all ready? Here we go. A one, two, and three, and four, and five. One, two, three, and four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Did you consciously do the exercise? And you could see that it's expanding, you're holding it there, and then slowly your hands will go inside as you release it, okay? One more time. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now get ready for a slight change. You will now, instead of five, take it to 10. I will give a count till 10. And my second set will be for five. And my third set again will be 10. So you're breathing in consciously till I, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then you will hold it, one, two, three, four, five, and you will again release it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And you will try to see that rhythm deep inside you. Just feel it for once and consciously do this exercise. I hope you're ready. That's, that's the worry with this virtual exercise because <laughs> I'm directly talking. I can only see in this form two people. I can see Sonia and me. But I, I'm hoping that all of you are actually at it. And just consciously try this with me and Sonia. If you're ready, here goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Some of you may have succeeded. Some of you may have, you know, said, oh, I can't take it for so long. No big deal. And with that, I must tell you that this kind of patterns, actually, if you try and do it every day, it gets you into a certain rhythm of breathing which is so very important for not only actors, singers and the likes, but for generally everyone on planet Earth. Because then you're consciously doing something which actually, you know, is a very integral part of you. That's your key to confidence as well. And uh, your diaphragm actually, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you will agree with me or some of you might already know this, that your diaphragm is your key to confidence. If you know your diaphragm pattern, and you know your rhythm in your body, these are keys, the main key to your level of confidence, okay? And I'm gonna end my breathing tip with the last pattern. We did a five, 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 then we did the 10, five, 10, and now, Let's do a 10 intake, 10 hold, and one release. <sighs> now this you will enjoy because you, if you consciously hold it up for a while, and then when that one comes, you release it. You're supposed to do this for five, seven times, uh, a particular pattern. And uh, very slowly, if you keep doing this, tomorrow again, we'll do this again. If you just remind me, Sonia, once or you take it up yourself. So that if you, you know, workshop, if you do these things on a regular basis, that's when you see, you know, it shaping up and making a little change. Making up a little change in your, you know, in your entire lifestyle or the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you sit and the way you exchange or whatever it is, you have to have the little consciousness in your entire body. And only a healthy body stays in a healthy mind. A healthy mind stays in a healthy body. But this is something you have to really know 
and mastery. I'll give you a few other things, but let's try this last pattern for once. So you get back into your, you know, I every time I do this breathing thing, I feel like a you know, black belt 10th dan or 7th dan kind of a martial artist. And you're ready now, take your stance. And at the count, it's 10 inside, 10 holding, and release it by saying, and just full pressure, release it when I say one. Clear? If the directions are clear here, let's start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One. How was that? Please take your seats, all of you. If, you. if you did this standing with me, please take your seats. Now, if you go on doing this for at least five, seven times in the day, you slowly become conscious of your breathing. And if you are conscious about your breathing, at the back end, your body will gather and gain more confidence because then you're working with the diaphragm and that is your key to confidence. You must have, you, you, you will, all of you will agree that there are only some people who said, I'll give it a shot when I have to go up on stage and perform. And there are a lot of people who would say that, oh, I just can't, are you kidding me? So that, that's the difference. And slowly, if you carry on mastering this, and if you can tell your friends that if you're conscious of your breathing, mm -hmm. and if you're con uh, consciously working with your diaphragm, you actually garner a lot of confidence. You know, that's one thing I thought I would share with you in the first part. And like I was giving you the example that uh, how important it is your breathing exercise and how important it is to know that your breathing pattern keeps changing. Like I said, when you're happy, it's a different kind of pattern. When you are sad, it's a different kind of pattern. And uh, when you are suddenly filled with terror and shock, it might just, your breathing might just stop for a while. And suppose I have heard stories that if you see a snake and it's suddenly you see a snake, a lot of people without the snake biting, people have heart failures. Because the breathing stops. The snake didn't do nothing. So it's that important, your breathing pattern. And that I thought I'll tell you when I was telling you in between that uh, when was the last time you spent time with yourself? This is something that I've asked a lot of my students, a lot of my senior students, my students in university, students in college, school, and various workshops. Not very many people remember when was the last time they spent time with themselves. Now this becomes a very, very important exercise that I know that we are in this digital world. It's all connected in the grid. It's grid world these days. And if you are out of the grid, you tend to, you know, you think that you missed out on everything. But if you're so constantly stuck to the grid, where is the time for you to spend with yourself? But these are instances in the morning if you do your breathing exercises and you're conscious about your pattern and this, how this relates to your confidence, to your voice, the instrument, like Sonia said, the instrument that we all play, the instrument that we all have, that you have to keep it a little tuned. And breathing low is one fantastic exercise. This I must tell you. And we do this just before we go up on stage with all the actors together, that you breathe low. Low and you try and take it as deep as you can. You know, beyond your diaphragm, straight down and take the breath down. And when you breathe low, try that. And when you breathe low, add an S in the front. Breathe slow and low. And that is one trick that actually gives you that boost, that energy and that confidence. And with that few tricks, you just, just go up onto the performing area and give it your two shots. Sonia, take it away from here again. And let's see, let's hear the reactions. Are you guys okay there with us? 
Can we hear a clap at three? And that three, one, two, three is the time for you to unmute, okay? That's what I'm, that's one thing I'm trying to do at the moment. One, two, and three, unmute, and let's hear. Are you okay? Okay. Sounds, sounds really good. Sonia, you want to take up something else at the moment? Did you guys actually uh, try the breathing? Yes. Yeah. Great, 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 great. Yeah, um, so it's, it's actually pretty interesting that we're talking about voice, but we've yeah. um, not really heard anybody's voice so far. We have two people, who, two participants who turned on their voice and Let's turned do on their screen. Exercise. So I, I think it'd be really nice to at least uh, quickly do this. Maybe you can just unmute yourself and just tell us your name and uh, maybe why you joined the workshop. That'd be a nice way to get to know you. At least, and Sonia, uh, if I may add... Here and Sonia, yeah. if I may add on why you joined your workshop, your name, and uh, and also two things that you don't like. We all, okay. all we all share things that we like, but Sorry? I'm interested in knowing a couple of things that you don't like. Your name, why you joined the workshop, and two things that you don't like. That will be nice and sweet. Yeah, Sonia. Yeah, so I think we can start with Miss uh, Shilaja. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Shailaja, uh, and I've joined from Bangalore. And uh, what else should I say? Why have you joined the workshop? Okay. Oh, I love theater. I have been in theater on and off, and uh, wow. And I mean, wherever, whenever, I've been in theater continuously. I should say from when I was a kid. And I've been part of Ranga Shankara in Bangalore. Uh, uh -huh. If any of you have visited Bangalore, you would know Ranga yes, Shankara. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes. So I was part of their theater productions, some of them. And uh, yeah, I'm also a storyteller. And two things I don't like, I can say that uh, I don't like fake people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't like, uh, I don't know. I think it's okay. I don't yeah, know. That's <laughs> exactly. exactly. So welcome to, well, welcome to this workshop once again. Thank you. Thank you. So far, I'm very glad. Is, is, is it okay so far? Are you, are you on oh, a good yes. journey so always, far? Yes, yes, of course. Because it's always refreshing to revise, revisit. Whatever you know, you don't know, pick up new things, everything. So I never miss a chance to... Join a theater workshop. Likewise, yeah. We get to learn from each Thank other. You. Yes. Yeah. Great. Hey, Decom, can I speak? This of is course. Tina. Need you ask? Tina. <laughs> but I wish. Hey, I welcome, could... welcome. <laughs> I'm going to put yeah, on my video. We want to see you so badly. We just saw you. I, like I said, I can't even. I can't even see who all are there. But such a delight. That's Tina Atifa Masood. Before I she speaks, speak. I must tell you all that she was one of my finest actors in the group. And this, uh, she's been there since the time I started in our heydays. It brings back so, so much of fond memories, Tina. I can't tell you in words. It's always such an emotional exercise being with you guys. And I hope that we can again, you know, get back to stage together very soon. I want now to, that I we, want to. Now that we're getting younger, we should get back to stage <laughs> yes, together. Absolutely. Tina, over to you. I was never older than 16, yeah. I, I bonsai. I was never 16, ever. <laughs> bonsai at 16, I have never grown up. My family keeps complaining. My son and daughter, they've all grown up and look at me. I'm still stuck badly in 16. <laughs> Take it away, Tina. Good to see you. What a so, delight. Um, yeah. I, I joined this workshop when I saw your name. I mm -hmm. had to be there because you were one of my first gurus in theater. Oh my goodness. I, there have been more, but then, you know, you taught us the nuances of theater and how to move on stage. Mm -hmm. You, What you did was special was, if I don't know if you're going to speak about this, but you actually mapped out everything. Which actor would stand where, where she would come forward, he or she, whoever. But you mapped it out so well. And then later when I was working with other directors, I never really got that kind of an exciting experience, you know, and I always missed you so much. And I said, I wish Decom was here. So, so <laughs> I joined this uh, workshop because I love you so much, Decom, and you are one of the best teachers, best uh, 
drama theater person ever that I ever met, and I learned everything from you. And if you're asking me what I hate, I hate communal bigots, bigots, whatever you call them. I, I, I hate those communal religious whoever people, whatever they are. Countries, so I I don't like that. That's it. But what a delight to have you, Tina. I hope you'll be with us tomorrow as well. And where's your little one? You should have also got him in. That he writes so so well. Huh? But get him tomorrow if he. Yes. Is that. Yeah. All the best. All the best. And all the best, the Tina. Stay on. Stay on. And I will actually share with them how I do that exercise on a blank sheet of paper. Yeah, great to have you, Tina. Yeah. Lots of love to you. Bye. Lots See of you. love to you as well and your family. Yeah. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye, I, I, stay on. Yeah. <laughs> Who's next, Sonia? I think we have Miss Reshma. Yeah, hi. Hi. I'm Reshma. I live in Guwahati. My interest in theater started when I was very small, not even five years old, and my parents took me to watch these movies. Uh, these are uh, plays, Julius Caesar in Bengali. Wow. In, uh, place called uh, New Field in Guwahati. That's where they used to play these during just before puja. Right. That's when I saw Julius standing on stage and, you know, a remarkable figure. And for a small five-year-old, that really stayed with me. And then I joined uh, Garima Hazarika's uh, dance classes and that's when she introduced me to dance drama, played a couple of lead roles of the story of the rabbit, uh, the, um, the, uh, the rabbit, the hare and the lion. The you know, kind of folk tales, which yeah. the Panchatantra tale. Lovely. And I joined this workshop because, uh, yes, DCOM, I know you from your childhood, <laughs> and uh, I thought uh, it would be a wonderful opportunity yeah, uh, to learn yeah. from you. And uh, things that I uh, I hate, I hate uh, would be hypocrisy. Yep. Likewise. I yeah. I just cannot. Yes, I cannot. Uh, Bear it, and uh, um, just a second of it uh, just really said, really, really, sort of turns everything upside down. True. So yes, I'm learning now, and uh, I just love your uh, the way you're conducting this uh, workshop, Sonia as well. So looking forward to it. Thank you. Stay on, my dear, and such a delight to have you with us. Such a delight. Freddie says hi. Freddie says hi. Yeah, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> So is there anyone else who'd like to unmute and perhaps introduce themselves, even if their videos are off? I think it'd be nice. We have yeah, I'm coming in. Give me a, one moment. Give me one moment, please. This is Rashmi. Yeah, hi. I, I have already, already been introduced, I guess. And yeah, I'm here because I'm also into a wee bit of storytelling. So I thought, let me, okay, no, from the D and uh, Sonia, the beautiful, pretty, lovely, energetic Sonia, how I breathe and how I hold on to my confidence as and when I do my storytelling. So I thought, okay, yeah. And about not liking two things, I guess there are not too many things, not too many things that I don't like. I guess I'm in love with all many things. So that's it. So here I am for your workshop. Great, great. Amazing. Who's going next? Who's going next? Let me ask, I see this, I see the names now on the phone. Okay, let me ask Ananya Khan to come and you know introduce herself, this little one, or the bright little one that we have, and uh, she's been a part of the exercise. So Ananya, let's hear it from you. Come on. Um, hi, good morning, sir. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Ananya Khan, and um, I have the good fortune of being one of Deconser's students, like much of us here. Um, why I joined this workshop is even though I knew about it quite late, I joined it simply because of Sir and when he mentioned it, I knew I couldn't miss out on such an opportunity. Um, two things that I dislike would, I mean, nothing comes to mind as such, but perhaps um, like many of us have said already, I dislike um, 
a blatant show of lack of empathy that we see among a lot of people and i dislike i dislike the ability that a lot of people have to take things for granted because we do not have anything for granted so um that's it about me thank you so much for this workshop sir and ma'am it's it's an honor to be here thank, thank you, you anandya nice to hear from you so anyone else do you think sonia would like to speak i'm um, sorry so i had seen um i think pranami bora i think her video was on for a while as well i saw her coming in and going out so if she's still there it'd be lovely to hear from you yes uh, hello Hello. Hello. I guess you can hear me. Yes. Yes, we can. Uh, uh, my name is Pranami uh, Bora. I am from Guwahati. I am the nephew of Rosmi Najeri uh, Buni Jethai, and I joined this. Nice. I, I joined this meeting because uh, I joined. I joined this meeting because I am very interested to drama, acting, theater. I am also doing uh, regular classes in Bar Studio Theatre with Pakiza Ma'am, and I am very interested to know some more few few things more means more things on drama. And that's it. Uh, I have done theatre three times, I guess. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pranami. Lovely to hear from you. Thanks for joining. So I think this this works better if we can call the people out. Maybe they yeah. inter interact a little more. Um, so would you like to go next? Pick someone before we. No, it's okay. Then no, we can we can we can we can carry on, and then we can you know yeah. take another break, and then again see who's willing to you know open up more in the process. Absolutely. Yeah. So Sonia, why don't you take the next step forward? Right, so um, it's so amazing. Firstly, I just want to add that um, all a lot of the people who've joined this workshop are already veterans uh, in the art, and they've already yeah. performed. Um, but I think that's just the beauty of theatre. You just never get enough of it, and you always just want to keep coming back to receive this vibe and to refresh your memory of what it's like to be on stage. And it's also just the company. I think theatre people are some of the most enthusiastic and some of the most kindest people I've met. and the perspective to life is just so different in terms of being exhibit a and uh, <laughs> um so a lot of you have already mentioned that you're here because of your love for theater you've already performed on stage and so let's just talk a little bit more i think um yeah you know while since we've gotten to talk like this ever since corona entered our world uh, we've all just been locked down and um so we've not had the opportunity to really meet with people so it's so nice to have uh, shaila ja ma'am from bangalore it's how nice to have you and so people joining us from all over so that's lovely so why i like theater i just like to add since we're all talking about this um what attracted me to this art form is the fact that a um when you get of course the fact that you get to live so many lives um and live so many experiences that perhaps you'll never get to experience first hand in your own life and um so one thing is that whenever i get on stage certain roles because obviously life's never perfect so you've got ups and downs and you've got your baggages that you have at home all of the problems that you have personally but when you come on stage you somehow get to leave that and you get to live a different life so i love the freedom that the stage gives you apart from that another thing that i really learned when i did the last play that i did with dikam so with uh, on sadat hasan manto stories like uh, uh, yeah some of the most powerful stories that manto has written and also park bench blues I I realized that the the characters that we were playing I played two characters and it was quite interesting because I was first a part of Manto's play and I was playing the role of a researcher and I suddenly had to switch to um maybe a 60 or 70 year old woman and uh, you know whose husband had cheated on her and she had just she was trying to pour out her heart to someone that she met on the on, in the park and uh, there's there's you know the lines just whenever i would get into those roles or i would be i would try to relive the partition era you know it would hit me that we're in a much better place and so that way when i'd come out of that role i'd feel like oof thank god i'm in this life 
you know, thank God I don't have a husband yet, but you know, hopefully he won't cheat on me like this woman unfortunately had to go through. And she lives with her dog called Ginger Boy. I, I remember Sir would teach me how to say that. And there was a particular way we'd have to say it. And so, I mean, it also teaches you to value your life as you get to be in somebody else's shoes. And I think that's just the beauty of theater. Sometimes you live a different life and feel free and sometimes you value your own a little more. So I, I love that about the art. Now, uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about theater would be how, not just theater, because I feel like a lot of us maybe were here, um, like I said, may not exactly want to act per se. Some of us are here because we're into storytelling or maybe some of us just want to enhance our public speaking skills and stuff like that. So a lot of what we're going to cover in the in this two-day workshop will be general traits and general characteristics that will not just help you enhance yourself as a theater personality, but overall as a person as well. So let's say you don't want to get on stage, but just maybe in a meeting or in an interview, how should I interact with another person? I think we'll be talking about a few of those um, traits as well. So something I wanted to touch upon about what makes theater so different. We've got so many mediums, we've got so many art forms, but what really stands out about theater, it's not like cinema or it's not just music, it's a combination of various art forms coming together. And what's so different about theater, I personally feel, is that um, you're being watched by a live audience, you're performing live, there are no cuts, there are no retakes, no edits. And uh, much like life, you can't edit the parts that you like and dislike in life and theater is much like that. So um, that's something that I really like about theater. And it teaches you how to overcome challenges. There are usually budget restrictions. There is a lot of restriction about how we don't usually have a lot of camera in theater. Of course, now we've got channels on television that showcase theater. So that sort of kills the whole point. But uh, usually in theater, we don't have cameras that can focus. So a lot of it is how you play with lights and how you play with sound. So it's a lot more challenging. And that's why I think theater becomes such a different medium. Um, so I, I love this quote that I had read by one of these uh, theater playwrights and directors called Peter Brook. And he had written this really interesting book called The Empty Space. And he says that um, any empty space is a barren stage. And when a human goes on that empty space and is being watched by another person, that's an act of theater. So theater can be performed anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to happen on a stage setup. Um, it can be done on the road. We've seen flash mobs. We've seen a lot of theater uh, productions being taking place in malls. And I think that's, that's really the beauty of it. And what I personally have seen is that our generation needs to revive this art form of theater which is why I'm so glad that we have started a workshop like this and we have youngsters joining in. We've also got a more experienced veterans joining in. So it's amazing that this theater community is coming together to revive this art form that needs the recognition that it deserves because it is such a powerful medium. So I think Sir would agree with me. It's not, um, yes, I, I like it has been mentioned earlier, I ventured into new media. I do like to use Facebook and YouTube to of course um, express creativity. I mean, why not? But what makes theater so different is that it's still such an independent medium. I think that's the power of theater. For example, let's talk about our nation now, we've got certain ideas and certain values that are really becoming dominant. And of course, we are free to think otherwise. But if I were to make a video that may not exactly be in tandem with the idea of the establishment, I've, I've had these experiences myself where the video has either been censored or the video has been removed from YouTube. So, you know, these new platforms, though they are very, very efficient and they help you to reach a wider audience, there's also a lot of restrictions that are added to it. You know, it's, it's very easy for you to, your video to get put down or for your account to be banned. That's something that we're seeing, but theater cannot be stopped. You see, you can stop me from performing in one place, but then that's how theater is. I can take that story and perform it somewhere else. I can do it in, on the road. I can do it in the mall. And so I think that's the power of theater that we're going to try to tap into. And hopefully by the end of this two-day workshop, we'll see more people who'd want to come and perform live. And the, I think Sir Dikom would like to add to why live performance is different and the beauty of it. So before we get into the more technical aspects, if you can talk a little about this as well, about why we need live performance and what makes, so, what makes it so different.
So can you hear me? Well, I think his video is stopped. Sonia, can I share something about a live performance? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, you see, when I was in JNU, I was part of a production called uh, Naga Mandala by Girish Karnar. Yeah. And I had never heard about this play before. And then we had the first reading and I got interested. So earlier, I used to be on stage performing. This time, I was in the production team. And this was in the open air theater in JNU. So uh, when we rehearsed, we rehearsed in a hall, a uh, student hall. So when the day we performed it on two nights, so the uh, protocol was that, and our university is uh, very close to the Indira Gandhi International Airport, so we used to have these airplanes flying overhead, and they would make a lot of noise. So whenever a plane used to take off, the actors, they would have to freeze for those 10 seconds. So even if you're in the middle of the climax or a very important speech or a good action scene, the minute you hear the plane take off and it reaches your sound zone of the university, that's when all the actors you please and the audience also used to stay very quiet. And that was something. And that, uh, you know, that production experience took my learning of theater to an entire different level. I'm so glad I was part of it. Yeah, Thank you, Sonia. Yeah, I think we can all relate to that. I mean, live performance is unparalleled, not like any other form of art, not like any form of, yeah, of course. I guess uh, that's what Shalaja just mentioned, Nanga yeah. Mandala. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, that's it. Carry on, please. I'm sorry for the interruption. Sorry, it was Reshma who mentioned, uh, not I, Nanga Mandala. Uh, what was it you mentioned? I didn't anything now. Uh, a while ago, you said you were with that particular theater group? Oh, Ranga Shankara. Ranga Shankara. Okay, okay. I'm sorry I got confused. Yeah, yeah that's it. All right, I think we've uh, lost Decom, so I think his connectivity. But um, so yeah, we, we are talking about this right now. We're talking about the love for live performance. I think that's something that is so important to understand about what is so different about this art form and why it's important to preserve it. <clears throat> so if anybody else would like to add on why, what, what, what do you think may, why do you think theater is different from other art forms? What makes it different? Yeah. Uh, live theater especially is so vibrant because it gives you a real high with, because of the response of the audience to the dialogues you say, and it makes it more alive and charged than any other form is what I feel. Absolutely. I agree. It, it gives you a different thrill, doesn't it? Yeah. So um, who else would like to add? Would, would any of the younger ones like to speak as well? Ananya, if you're here, if you'd like to add, why do you think theater is different from other art forms? Um, I, I don't have that much of knowledge to say something, but then again, I believe theater is different from other art forms simply because you've got so much more scope in it. You don't have to confine yourself to a particular um, way of acting. You have the ability to improvise every time you go up on stage on the same production. And I think that's something that's very interesting about it. Absolutely. And I think um, there's, there's nothing better than speaking from your own experience. So um, it's amazing that we have people from all age groups um, speaking from their own experiences. Um, just a minute, I'll just have to make someone co-host. All right. Okay, would anyone else like to add before we move on? Would anyone else like to add? Um, Darshana Baudeloy is here as well. Amir Soheli, there are quite a lot of people if anybody would like to add. All right, I, I think no one, no one's gonna add. All right, so one thing that I've seen about theater is, or any other art form, is that it gives you the ability to say things that no one would listen to otherwise, <laughs> right? Because I mean, let's say you've had a terrible, your heartbreak. You go and tell someone, no one's gonna listen. But if you write a song on it, or do a play about it, it immediately has a wider reach and you can connect to various people. Yeah, do you agree with that? 
Yeah, so I think that is the beauty of theater or any other art form. It gives your personal experience a more global reach and helps people connect to it as well. So that's that's the beauty of it. Now, I, I figured, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but those of you who don't, the word theater comes from a Greek word called theatron, which means the seeing place. So it's beautiful because this is the place where people come to see. See what? See life and see society. All right, so I, I love this definition of theater and that's why we call it theater. It comes from the word theatron. So in other words, theater is not just a form of entertainment that just gives you a high, a kick in, the, in, in that moment, but it also can bring a change that will last for a, a longer span of time. And we've seen that happen time and time again. In fact, now we're seeing a lot of universities use the form of theater as well. You see flash mobs happening on the street. You see people trying to create awareness about um, sexual violence, sexual abuse using theater. And honestly, you know, I had, I had once um, seen a play on rape in a mall, on sexual violence and sexual abuse in a mall, um, you know, where I suddenly saw this guy coming in and pushing the girl. And he started suddenly, I mean, it was an act, but it was so impressive and it left an imprint on me. And I remember I must've been about 12 or 13 when this happened, but that's when I realized that theater is more than just entertainment. And so there are a lot of theater houses, I think Sir Decom would like to add. So we've just been talking about um, what makes theater different from other forms of art. And uh, we've had quite a lot of people share on this as well. So if you can hear me. Oh. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I'm sorry right. I got distracted because of the network connection. Yeah. But so we've just been having a quick chat with everyone about what makes theater a different art form, how it is unique compared to movies or music. What makes theater different? And uh, one thing that we all agreed to was that um, apart from, of, of, of course, the thrill and the rush that you experience when you Pardon? perform live all audience, color, all my color. Um, yeah, I think that's... Okay, so apart from, yeah, we've had some background music. So yeah, so I, I get it. I totally, yeah. get it. I totally got it. But I must tell you something. Who have come in? Can I request uh, someone who is uh, participating and taking on some something on a personal side to you know keep your microphones mute yeah. so that we can carry on with the people who are actually into the into the feel of that workshop yep so i must tell you my personal little experience uh, i don't know it's worth sharing or not but uh, especially for Sailija and the likes who joined in from different parts of the country i was raised in a place called uzambazar in guwahati i was having this quick chat with sonia the other day and uh, I realized that we have this fantastic river flowing and with the river comes in the wholesale fish market where we have auctions running from early in the morning at four. And with a fish auction market with those tails early in the morning, uh, people who haven't seen this place, the buzz, the vibe at four in the morning, you can start imagining what it will be. Then comes in the, the language per se, then comes in the mood that plays amongst the people who are into this business and uh, reflecting upon the area. But then in this very fancy place, what happened was just near my house, we had this very traditional ancient Bhaskar Natya Mandir. And this was created by a few creative stalwarts of the city then and was one of the first performing places of Guwahati. And I realized that no matter what, no matter what people complain about the toughness of this place, Uzan Bazar, people get scared to come in after seven, you know, early morning, you can imagine what kind of a fist fight that goes around. And then the likes, we, we, we are known about that kind of a situation. But again, it also had, it's one of the oldest localities of the city with a pin code being one. And you also had a lot of stalwarts on the creative side, film, theater, the creative arts, singers, musicians from this part. And so I realized that Bhaskar night the Mandir in the evening when people gathered there, the scenario of the entire place changed because of theater, culture and all these things happening. 
Then another experience I saw was we have another club called Hujjo Club. Amidst the, amidst, besides the rail line uh, in the Guwahati Club, CK Agarwala Road, which is near a school. And it's, it was very dark in the evenings. And that was another place where, you know, a lot of activities used to take place, the activities that we don't want to discuss, that kind. <laughs> but then with that place buzzing, Hujjo coming in, <laughs> taking a form of a theater space or a creative space for, you know, creative people, the entire milieu of that area changed. Progoti Hilpi Hongho was another place in that same area which changed that locality, you know, uh, that was my father's set. Then New Art Players, another creative set. So I was, I was trying to get up and Seagull, which Barulda has started in Zurod, where he stays. Then Bar Theatre, which this little one reflected just now. All these spaces that are created in the city, it changes and revitalizes these neighborhoods. And that, I think, makes a lot of difference to the society and the growth of the society. And I thought I'll really mention this in the workshop. And each of these theaters opened for new audiences. People started flooding in. And besides came in those small eating joints. Of course, jobs were created. Of course, now it's a different story. I was hearing a lot of people from National Theater in London also losing out their jobs and the likes. I was there last year myself. And we had a little workshop there as well. But you know, with these eat, eating places and restaurants coming up, jobs opening, people flooding to these performing spaces, the sidewalks being improved and the likes. The once grim neighborhoods are becoming vibrant hubs of activity. Now that I must give it to the creative art forms, especially theater. And um, I'm so glad people are still on with us this morning for the workshop. And now, Sonia, do you think it's time that we get on with the something that we can demonstrate and show on listening or something of that sort? Or do you want me to take up something and you are getting ready for the next whatever? Can I, can I, talk, can I then quickly talk about silence if you Yeah, have. absolutely, yeah. You, you feel free to add in. And I, can I request all the participants, young and old, or the theater lovers and the likes, that if you think that you want to join in a part of this discussion, what we are trying to relate, please, please feel free to share your point of view as well and make this workshop your workshop and more vibrant, okay? That will be really appreciated. Now, one thing that really fascinated me in the theater space, uh, this, my old actors in Tinnat and all will also agree, uh, that uh, I really enjoyed silence. And I always used to tell the actors and also the technical hands that you know, listening, active listening becomes so very important that I can't describe in words and especially in a workshop like this where we are virtually talking. Listening is such an active uh, communication skill uh, that uh, I'll try and describe. Hello. God. Yeah, when I say that, you know, again, let, let's, that's why I thought that Sonia would be of help here. That's a, Sonia, are you listening to me? Yes. Then if I tell her that, no, you're not. The Sonia is not listening to me. And she's nodding her head. You know, <laughs> it's getting a little programmed here. But my point of view is, if I feel that, you know, I'm telling her that, Sonia, you are not listening to me, which means that the person gets to see something and feel something, mm -hmm. that you are not listening to me. Right. And then if the question comes in, no, I am listening to you, what is it that you are trying to say? And that's the time the other person takes you in. And there is no other satisfaction like that when someone actually takes you in in a part of a conversation exercise. And that actually becomes a very, very important towards listening. And when you're on a rehearsal space, I always tell my actors that it's so interesting to be on the rehearsal space because that's where everything happens. The performance is just 
ten percent out of the entire total, you know, feel of that theater kind of a thing. Every walk that you, you know, every step, every hand that you move, there has to be a reason, you know. And uh, it'll be nice if uh, uh, I was trying to get there on silence and uh, listening as well. But these two things, I personally feel, if anyone in this workshop wants to add on what they feel. And if I will give both of us, Sonia and me, if we ask you uh, that, what do you think of silence and what role does it play in your life? It will be nice to hear from all of you as well, if some of you want to share this point. Sonia, take it up from there. What does it feel? What does silence make out of you? And then yeah, we can have silence. others come. Absolutely. I think silence is one of the most powerful weapons that we possess just as humans. You know, I feel like in our day-to-day -day, um, conversations with people, a lot can be said when you don't say anything at all. Yeah. Right? Sometimes I feel like a lot is emoted but with least number of words. And so I think that's what Sir is also trying to get at. I remember the role that I had played in Park Bench Blues. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't have a lot of lines that would actually emote the, um, or would kind of express the kind of person that I was. But a lot of what I was doing in silence, I mean, later when I would speak to the audience or the people who were watching the play, they'd come and tell me that what they noticed the most was what I was doing when I didn't say anything at all. You know, in the silence, how is my body moving? Um, I had um, I had a rosary for that character, I remember. And I would I would keep counting the beads I would, on the rosary. I'll keep telling the beats. And, um, and I remember my tongue would roll in a certain way. And uh, just, staring, it, just staring into space and not saying anything would emote a lot more about the pain that my character was going through. And so yeah. I feel like uh, to be able to use silence, I feel in, in drama, not always having to overdo it, uh, little is more. I feel especially now we're, we're entering this um, age where little is more. And when you don't overdo your expressions, I feel like a lot more is emoted. When you don't say much, a lot more is said. And so um, even, in, even in the videos that are being made nowadays about awareness when it comes to sexism or violence, you know, a lot of them are using silence as a very effective tool. And a mime, miming, or even if you just look at the Charlie Chaplin movies, very little dialogue, but um, some of the most powerful things were said through silence. Very true, very right? true. And Sonia, quick, quickly to uh, quickly to tell you, take a quick quick call on this point. Yeah. That I think. Do you think that it will be great uh, for all of us here in this workshop if you can, you know, trigger off with? Uh, let's also take up listening here, who, yeah. who have, especially the people who are actively listening at the moment, mm -hmm. and uh, get into participation. And if you can now take a line, a sweet line, and then roll it amongst all the participants and let them tell it their way. Yeah. Although it can't be, you know, the same as the intonation or the pause pattern or the sense, if it can change, then we will, after we get a, a variety of that same line, then maybe we'll be able to take up a, a little discussion going forward. What say, do you think the time is apt? Sonia? Oh. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, that way we'll get to know the participants a little better as well. Yeah. And, have, and you know, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. All right. So I think we can just give um, a very simple line. Yeah, very simple line, but you know, tell them more on what uh, they should do. And, uh, and uh, all the participants uh, with us this morning, this afternoon rather, as the day progresses. Like I told you, I wake up at 3.30 in the morning. So for me, it's well past afternoon as is. <laughs> but uh, just feel free to be yourself. There's no one judging nobody. Yeah. And we have a lot of uh, experienced people who have taken the stage some, uh, a gazillion times. Like I know about Saleja, she just told us that. And also Rashmi Nazari for that matter. They are storytellers and they do that in front of an audience. Now, what better experience can we talk of? You know, Absolutely. I, I, I was telling this, my, my, co my very old actors know this very well, that I have always been a very shy kind of person, a very introverted, shy kind of person. And I've told you, I've lived two parallel lives. And uh, I was falling back on a lot of uh, intoxicants at, the, at one point of time. 
and uh, I couldn't actually face a lot of people and I leave it to the actors to do that and I disappear after the production is over. But uh, we have some fantastic people like Tinat uh, and all these people who I see and the young ones like Ananya and all. You know, it's such a delight to have all of you and they, Rashmi, Salija and all, Tinat, they're storytellers and they're performing every time. A lot of teachers, university, professors and school teachers, college teachers, they keep performing every second of their work. And this is the only work. And I, I was asked in an interview that I like this line so much that I told them that this is the only profession that one can call play theater, you know, I, and, I, and I so love it so much. Yeah. And now, Sonia, let's design that line for everyone. And um, I request everyone to participate wholeheartedly and give it your best kind of a drive and let's see more energy coming into this workshop and um, then we will take a call on tone patterns pauses and the likes so yeah take it away my dear yeah so um since it's the first activity so to speak that we're going to be doing for today um, i thought we'll start with a very simple line a line that we say almost every day which is hi it's so good to see you Mm. That's the line. Hi, it's so good to see you. So that can be said in so many ways and can mean so many things. So uh, we'd love for you to participate and show us how you'd say it. And uh, Sonia, if you can, you know, quickly name the participant, I'm sure they'll be willing and they're yeah. very kind and sweet. But just to, you know, trigger that kind of, a, you know, a feel, a good feel for the response. And since you have that screen up in front of you, Mm -hmm. uh, just call out the name and let's see uh, how they deliver that line. And then we'll come back to pauses in the line. All right, so, um, so we'll call, I think, one of your students first. I mean, we're all your students, but of course. Yeah, um, Anand, yeah. so Ananya is there. She's, she's been uh, with us and she's been interacting as well. So we'd love to hear how she'd say this line. Yeah. Hi, it's so good to see you. Um, all right, okay. Um, uh, Hi, um, it's so good to see you. Yeah, so did, did you I say... I realized that I did that in a very distracted manner, but... I yeah, that's... that's be right. if we could also see their facial expression, so we'd be able to decipher a little more. Yeah. Would you like me to do it again? Yeah, do that again. Hi, it's so good to see you. Yeah, thank you, Ananya. And uh, Sonia, Ananya, and the others, please take a note, all the participants, of the way Ananya just placed that uh, one-liner. And if you, if you ask me as an observer of this exercise, I request everyone to feel the backstory of that line which Ananya said, you know, the backstory, if you can unbox it, I would to just, you know, start off this exercise, I would say that uh, Ananya met someone who she was not expecting to meet, maybe very close at one point of time, but there was some rift that took place and then they suddenly meet and they are both at a loss of words, but although for curtsy's sake, and maybe there are other people around them, so that's what Ananya came up and said. Hi. Ananya, can you do that again? The same way you did it? I, I'm trying to. Yeah, try. Hi. It's so good to see you. Now, is, my, is, is, is the discussion falling into place or not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that is that is how you do the rehearsal. And you don't tell the actor from the directional point of view. You are not supposed to tell the director that I want the piece to be like this. You give them the backstory. That's what I've been trying. And this is one small tip that I learned from my father. That I'm not supposed to show acting, my dear. We've taken you because we think that you can deliver that craft of act. That's why you've taken and so this kind of a thing it has its own backstory. Like Ananya started off, now we'll go to the next person. And everyone will have a backstory to relate. And that makes 
exercise so so very interesting i i i told you in the beginning and some people that's what i do now what i mean but getting to know the back story is so challenging yeah let's have the next sonia then uh, and sonia this time when you hear the next participant sonia i leave it to you to unbox that story okay yeah, yeah. sure um we've got darshana bordolai if you're here Okay, I think we'll move on to the next one. Pratiksha Rajput. Pratiksha, if you can hear us. Although we would like the workshop to be very participatory, and yeah. tomorrow we we will be silent and uh, we'll hear more from you guys. That's what we expecting. Yeah, Pratiksha. So we've. Come to Miss Reshma. Hi, it's so good to see you. Hmm. It's I, nice. I see your face. Can you can you do it again, ma'am, if you don't mind? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi, it's so good to see you. That actually sounds like she's genuinely happy to see the person as well. Yeah, like, I also think. To a friend. Yeah. Yeah, and for the others that who's willing to try, try and give it a different feel. Now let's. I let me request Saleja. Yeah, why not? Awesome. Great. Oh, you are you to unmute yourself, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Hi, so good to see you. Oh dear me, that was that was nice. And uh, do you want to go with the backstory, Sonia, and ask her later whether whether your story is right or wrong? Uh, can can you do it once again? I I just want to make sure I I deciphered it right. Let me try again. Uh -huh. Hi, so good to see you. All right. Uh, that's that could mean a lot of things. I've heard people say hi that way and mean a lot of things. So can you hear me? Yeah, very much. I'm trying Hello. to position myself. You see that ceiling fan behind me? I'm trying to position myself in such a manner Hello. that there's a halo behind my head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I would. Yeah, well, what is your take on this, Sonia? It's it's a little uh, difficult to decipher because it could mean a lot of things. But my high, take on, I mean, mm. you can say what you feel. Yeah, yeah. you Don't can't go wrong, that. can you? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm still trying to. So, what what would you think? Let's see if we think. Alike. I would say that. Uh, uh, this someone in the family she is met, who's young, young in age, a younger person, in her family or in her friends, uh, in her close circle, who she is very fond of, and that person she suddenly sees, and there she goes on that tone pattern. Do I get a five mm -hmm. on ten here? Five on five. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there. Yeah, but, uh, I think that's great. Thank you so much for you know giving us that shot. And that's how that that is the beauty of a theater workshop. You know, you can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, and it becomes interesting when there's a lot of participation. We see we, now we see that Rashmi Baido has turned on her camera, which means she is ready to come up with that line. Over to you. May I please get the line? I just went for a cup of tea. I'm oh, back oh, now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we should have given a... By now, Rashmi Vaido, by now, we should have told everyone that, you know, keep your cameras and your connections on. And uh, we would otherwise would have, you know, um, uh, sponsored or gotten that little goodie pack and that cup of tea or, uh, you know, 
or a refreshing drink or something of that sort. But for this for this time, you have to get your own. But if you need a little break, we, we can do a little break. But let Rashmi Baido take uh, take her thing up, and Sonia, if you can help her with that, then yeah. we will ask everyone if they need a break. So the line is hi. It's so good to see you. Uh, do, I do, do, I tell it, you. do I tell it to someone whom I have met after a long while? No, you it, are not going to tell us anything. Yeah, yeah. Sonia, please okay. explain it to her. You can okay. say it in any which way you want to deliver it. And then okay. we'll try to decipher the backdrop, the backstory. Okay. Hey, so good to see you. Okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That was really good. I am because now... I can feel it, you know, I'm actually feeling so good to see Dee and Sharija and Sonia, Sonia for the first time. I'm actually feeling so good and that's why I think. <laughs> I was about to tell all of you that Rashmi Baido has actually, you know, actually feeling very happy to see all of us here in the workshop today. And that's the reaction she gave. And I, I get a 10 on 10. How brilliant can I get? <laughs> Why am I so awesome? I don't even know. I should be getting so brilliant. My goodness. And did I get a 10 on 10 there? Of course I did. And so yeah. that's how, you know, what happens is the moment you change your tone, oh, oh, goody. And the moment you change your pause patterns and the gaps, and there are people who try to use the gaps differently. Now, what was that line, Sonia? Hello? Hi, it's what was so the good line? And if Hi, someone comes so and says... And if someone comes and says... Hi. Hmm. It's so good to... see you. What would it mean? Obviously, it's not a very good a good feel to you know, see, isn't it? And it's, yeah. And it's said so clearly. The negativity is so clear, and uh, I can't explain myself how I uh, how I uh, shared that word good. Well, it means totally the starkly opposite. But I've said it in such a manner. So this is how you can you know keep changing intonations, and you can take the uh, wrong kind of pauses which you which people normally expect that kind of a pause and you are not giving that pause. There's a different kind of a beauty, which I let a lot of my actors, uh, you know, uh, take the call on trying to get these uh, pauses in different patterns so that it doesn't sound the usual for the, for the audience. Sonia. Yeah, I absolutely agree, sir. The, the pause makes a lot of difference and it actually can change the entire meaning of the sentence. And I actually liked the way uh, Ms. Sh Shailaja uh, said the sentence as well. The hello, you know, that actually reminded me of a lot of the aunties that I meet in the, the gatherings and they have found out a secret about me. So they're like, hello, it's good to see you, you know, like Mujhe pata chala hai what you did. So I, I, I feel like that can also be interpreted that way, the hello. I've, I've heard that a lot, actually, out of personal experience. I mean, that could be one interpretation as well. But also show how mischievous you have been. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> yeah. So would you like it's to better, add? Sorry, if... If there's someone else who's trying to give that yeah. line, otherwise I'm going to request Tina to come and give that line for us. Absolutely. In her way. And we'll try and see what happens. If she's still there. Can Is I Tina still there with her? Can I think? Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Of course, so, please um, go ahead. Yeah, about about this pause you all were talking about when it comes to fair time. I think this precisely same thing, Arishma, you will remember. I had this uh, story writing workshop for uh, Writers Forum. I worked on this and I said, you know, there is this particular line from the Mahabharata, uh, Ashwatthama Hatha, Iti Gaja. So that particular pause gave the entire Mahabharata a totally new meaning. Yeah. So I think. I think this is where it uh, relates story writing, storytelling, and your theater. 
I think this is where I connect as a story writer. Sharija connects as a storyteller and uh, Sonia and Dee connect as the theater people there and Reshma as someone who absorbs everything. And of course, there are a whole lot of people out there, but uh, these are the few faces I see. I'm so happy that these are unmasked faces. So yeah. close together, so close yep. together. And in, and, in, and in this discussion, before we request Tina to give her the line her way, I would just like to add to what Sonia has been taking forward, that the self-expression bit in theater becomes so, so very important that it helps you express yourself and teaches you how to interpret others' emotions and making it easier to understand yourself and others in the process. And that's what I do, especially sitting on a chair. And it seems like you doing nothing, but this is what's happening silently. And this is what's happening in a very serious kind of manner, because after a couple of hours, I'm so tired, I can't tell you in words. But yes, self-expression, expressing yourself, it teaches you how to interpret others' emotions. And it makes it easier to understand yourself along with the others. And for the simple reason that theater is so full of raw emotions, and of course, emotions it is what makes us all very human. So now, Sonia, do you want to request Tina to give her a bit? Yeah, absolutely. Is she still there? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what dimension she brings in. There's also Ms. Zaira Shah, if she's around, maybe. Yeah, whoever's, whoever's willing. Yeah. We've gotten a message from Ms. Pratiksha Rajput. She says that she's got network issues, so she couldn't unmute herself. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think that's it. All right. So we've gotten a message from um, Ms. Zaira. She says that she's in class and she's listening to the session. So, so I think you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yep. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Yep. So, so that that brings us to uh, you know the kind of variety that one can experience with when it comes to delivery. And uh, a lot of people take a lot of time to work on uh, various delivery styles, styles of delivery and make it very unique. So when you're sitting in an auditorium and watching a live performance, you are not only attracted to the person who is on stage, by the physical appearance, you're also getting the pull from the way the person delivers. Now that makes it very, very kind, very, very special. And I'm sure the storytellers with us this, this, this afternoon will agree that you bring in that kind of a dimension. And this takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, research, and practice. So this is not a very easy art form, so to say. And like I was telling the organizers that, you know, it would be nice if we can have some people who actually love this craft and, uh, and they try to, you know, make something out of this entire exercise and make it very special. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so can, you, can you now take it up from there again, Sonia? It's a safe place for everyone, like I said in the beginning, but do, do you want to add in some more glory to this uh, listening and self-expression experience? Yeah, I, 
I think um, theater is being used widely, not just as a form of art, but I've seen that even in um, organizations nowadays, they actually encourage the employees to participate in theater activities because mm -hmm. it helps you to discover yourself, like I said, self-expression, and also helps you to yep. coordinate and cooperate with your team. So it has so many um, other benefits than just uh, helping you get on stage and perform a particular play, but I feel like it changes you um, inside out in so many ways. Um, so, so we, of course, we had spoken about a break. So, will we be taking a break now before we, uh, or? Um... No, this is for you know, Sonia. What you what you what you do is ask Jack, Rashmi, Baido, and uh, Sailija, and everyone. Yeah. That if it's because I am on the small toy, I my my network on the laptop is giving trouble, so I have shifted to my rupees uh, mobile phone. But you can just ask them that is it. Uh, good to you know take a break for 10 minutes do not disconnect from the line though uh, oh Tina uh, missed what I was saying because she was on a call but uh, Tina be with us we did a small activity around delivering a line in different ways like which we have done in our rehearsals and then we can you know we were taking a personal take on what kind of uh, tone pattern what was the situation in the lights but uh, at this moment, we are thinking of asking Sonia, Rashmi Baido, Selija, and Tina, and everyone around that is it the time to take a good break without disconnecting? Now, I would like to definitely have a cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. I think we yeah. can just carry on. Okay. Uh, okay. We can it? carry on. Uh, whoever needs a break can always walk up and then uh, come back. Uh, yeah. Get your get your mug and come back uh, in. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, goody, goody. You're a very nice kind of organizing set, I must say. On that note, let me quickly go and make myself a cup of tea. While uh, Sonia's still there, I can see her sipping from that cup of tea, something very fancy, which gives a lot of energy. Because she has the same, the same kind of brightness from the way we started today at 8.50. Thank you so much again, once again. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of our happiness. And uh, let's carry on. Great. Yeah. And we are. We 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 would also like you to sing for us today. Huh? One song, half a song, two verses, or whatever, to give in a different dimension to the entire workshop. I'll just be back with my cup of tea. All right, so I think um, while Sir is grabbing his cup of tea, let's let's do a little more of this interaction. It's been really fun to hear the way you guys deliver dialogues. And uh, so we've been talking, um, I think we discussed voice in the beginning, and we spoke about how it can be trained and it can be tuned and it can sound very different uh, depending on the way you want it to sound. And, you know, one thing about voice is because it's in the inside of you, it's very difficult for someone to actually tune it for you. So it's something that you'll have to work on yourself and um, you know the way you adjust your vocal tracks and depending on the kind of voice that you want to create. Um, so I think we are going to try and talk a little about that and I'll, I'll share a little about my personal experience as well. So I remember um, I grew up in a missionary school where elocution debating were very very important um, for us not just studies and um, so whenever we had elocution we'd be asked to speak in a very very polite way there were certain you know um, protocols that you would have to abide by, you have to bow. And uh, then, you know, you, the way you pronounce your what would be what and where were very British in the way we'd say things. Um, but then um, after that, I moved on to a newsroom setup and I had, I, I was a news anchor for a news channel and it took me a long time to be able to adjust and modulate my voice. So the first day I went on to the newsroom, this is what I said, I said, um, we have a breaking news coming in. And I was yelled at um, by my producers because that's not how you say breaking news, you know, um, because of course that was the way I was taught and that's how I would modulate my voice. So it would be, we have a breaking news coming in, very polite that there's been a bomb blast, there's been a terrorist attack. It almost be like I'm reciting a poem. And as and when I began to understand how 
you know, news, mainstream media works, I'd have to change my voice accordingly. So eventually, everything became about shouting and being sensational. And that's how you change your voice. And it becomes, we have a breaking news coming in. There's been a bomb blast in Ganesh Guri. You need to like emphasize more. So from, we have a breaking news coming in, to we have a breaking news coming in, it was a big change. So that way you can change your voice. I, another small example, I talk about how you can change your voice. Like um, I, I've, I'm not a trained singer, so I don't know why someone's asking me to sing. So, but I'm, I'm, I don't mind embarrassing myself in front of all of you. A theater enthusiast, so it's absolutely okay. Um, but then yeah, how we can change your voice again. So, um, what I've learned is depending on the kind of songs we sing, your voice can also change. Like if I'm singing a very Indian song, for example, I'd make my voice a little more sweet. Just giving an example, for example, it could be Piya Basanti Re Kahi Satai Aja It'd be more like mellow. And if, if I'm singing a more jazzy number, it would be like, um, <clears throat> suppose we sing, little girl, little girl with the big brown eyes and little girl, little girl, one day you fly. So the voice changes. So I'm, I'm laying more, I'm making my voice a little more baritone when I'm trying to sing the more jazzy song. And when I'm singing a more Indian classical sweet song, so I can make my voice a little more on the higher scale, higher pitch and make it sound a little sweet. So I think we can try and do that as well. So if it's all right, since we have, no, I mean, not ask you to sing, um, but uh, maybe you can try and um, see how you can experiment with your voice. Yeah. Right? It would be nice to say, I'm sorry, would be more bass, I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. You, you see, like it could be, I'm sorry, more mellow. Or it could be, I'm sorry, a little more annoying. So, and a little, you know, it hits your ear a little more. So if you can try, um, we'll give you a simple dialogue like, I hate you. Can you say that in two different ways? Just the people who have their screens on, I hate you. Yeah. Let's try that. Who'd like to go first? Me. So please, honor. I hate you. I hate you. Yeah. I actually hate you for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Decomsa to take it to a whole new level. Yeah. So um, who would like to go after that? <laughs> I'm glad I went before you. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to go after that? Come on, let's try. Okay, yeah. can I go, Sonia? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You would like to see you as well? How your eyes are behaving, Dinat? <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I actually, while, while you were, I was doing your workshop, I was also um, doing my dance classes at the same time, you know? Oh, uh, so wow. I'm all sweaty I'm and all... Anyway. Never mind. I'll, I'll, I think I'll look good now. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Let me, let me get into the mood because Dikom always wants us to get into oh. the mood. I hate you. I hate you! Ooh. Brilliant. Brilliant. I think I just got to run too. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks. Who wants to go again? Who wants to go next? I hate you. I hate Whoopsie. you. Whoopsie. I can feel the hate. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. Who's out. going next? Really good. Now, Sonia, I'm going to do another set. Yeah. If someone else is willing, let them go ahead. Then I'm going to do another one. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what uh, we'll try and get this difference out. Suppose I am out of the scene. And I'm going to say the same thing 
and I'm looking at the co-actor and I will use a little silence this time and let's see how it turns out to be. Experimenting and here I am. I hate you. How is that now? What does it say? I sarcasm. hate you. Sarcasm, absolutely. <laughs> sarcasm. Oh my God. So and good. that silence, huh? that really works magic. Mm -hmm. And if you can come in and get out again and say, you come, you see the person, you get in, take those five seconds. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> I hate you, my dear. <laughs> What kind of hating is Amazing. this now? <laughs> so what good. kind of hating is that? I wonder. Mm. So, you know, these sort of things when uh, what I'm trying to get at to all the people who are here with us today is that don't try always to give something which is not expected out of you at that moment. But don't use this trick every time, but for very special moments, which is very rich in that entire, say, performance, you've identified those two, three moments, try and use this kind of a pattern where people least expected that and they get to see something on those lines. That gives them an extra thrill. And that's when they say, wow. And that's a wow element. You know, it's not there in any books, but if you can try that at times, it really works wonders. Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to add and take forward? Mm, not now. We leave it to you. All right. Okay, so I think um, now that we've gotten a little bit of delivery and, um, oh, of course, uh, Ms. Shailaja, would, would you like to go and say this line? Because I think, yeah, we'd like to hear your hate. Okay. Yeah, your hate. I hate you. I hate you. Wow. Salaja, I got scared. That was that was so good. I and got scared. Yeah. Brilliant. And I could immediately uh, get a backstory of what she, who she might have been saying that too. It almost sounds like a woman who's been um, venting down her anger for, for a long time. And Great. maybe I don't know, could be an abusive husband and just push, putting it all out in that one moment. I, I hate you for everything you've done to me for all these years. So powerful. Loved Thank it. Thank you. Thank you too. Uh, so, okay. Um, I think so. I, should we speak a little on um, confidence now? Should we? Oh, yes. That? Take it away. Take it away, my dear. Yeah. So uh, like we said earlier, this is not an acting workshop, workshop per se. So we will not just be talking about delivery and expressions, but we'll try to talk about a lot of characteristics that you can develop just as people who want to get into any sort of teamwork and you want to maybe be on stage or off stage, like I said earlier. So we, I call this the seven golden traits that every theater person must possess. So the first one would be confidence. Now, um, you know, confidence is not something that we can build on stage. It's an overflow of who you are off stage. And it actually is built behind the scenes, right? And it takes time to build. It can't be um, an, a one day thing. So it's built over a period of time. Now for me, since we're talking about theater, um, you know, the minute we call ourselves creatives, I think Dikamsa would agree. The minute you put your art out there, so long as it's within the four walls of your room, it's all right for you to just be, say you want to call yourself an introvert, you, you say you don't have confidence, but the minute your art is put out there, there's bound to be criticism and of course appreciation. And you need to handle both with confidence, right? So for me, one of the most beautiful examples of confidence would be, um, I'd seen, I had read about this. Um, if you've heard, I mean, of course, you've all heard of George Bernard Shaw who wrote Arms and the Man, one of my favorites. So um, when Arms and the Man was first staged, there were a lot of people in the crowd who clapped and applauded him. 
But there was one man who stood up and he was the loudest and he booed, he booed his heart out when he watched Arms and the Men. And you know what George Bernard Shaw did? He just said, I absolutely agree with you, my friend. I absolutely agree with you. But we have no chance against so many people. You know, and I love the way he handled the entire situation with so much grace and so much confidence. So I think the beauty about confidence is not just thinking that you can never be wrong, but rather to not be afraid to be wrong. I think that's what confidence is, that even if I am wrong, that doesn't diminish my ability to fulfill the goal that I want to. So I want to share this funny incident with you. I had participated in a science seminar when I was in school, and I didn't know head or tail about science. I'm not a very, I don't have a scientific mind, I'm more, of, more into humanities, always been the more creative person. So I go up for this science seminar, and because I would always participate, participate in plays, by hearting scripts was very easy for me. So I by hearted the entire thing, my entire project, I just mugged it up. I didn't understand head or tail of what I was saying, but I knew how to sound really smart. And perhaps the judges thought I was a science nerd. And so I went on, you know, with my chart and I was like, so this is how we go about it. And that's our solar system. And I just pretended to be a science geek. And after that, I didn't know I was caught off guard that we had something called a question and answer session where they would ask us questions. And I was absolutely ill-prepared. So I go up there and I finish my little script that I had parroted. And then the judge asks me, it's like, um, so tell us, what do you know about the black hole? That's what the judge says is, what do you know about the black hole? And why is it called black hole? I had no idea, all right? And I'm, to be very honest, still date, I'm not very clear about it, okay? No shame in saying that gotta learn. But uh, yeah, so that was the question that was thrown at me. Wh why do you think the black hole is called the black hole? And that was really off my syllabus, or it was not something that I had mugged up. So I, I was I just didn't know what to say. So I was like, I just said something very philosophical. I was like, because it's, you know, it's filled with a lot of negativity. Yeah, that's what I went on to say, that it's filled with negativity. And, you know, a lot of um, dark thoughts are filled in that zone. And that's why it's called the black hole. Yeah, because of the negativity. Very confidently. And I was like, thank you, sir. As though I aced it. I was a little Einstein in my head. And to my surprise, I came second in the science seminar, even after giving a completely wrong answer. Right. And then later the judge comes and tells me, I, I know your answer was wrong, but your confidence was what mattered to us. So not being afraid to be wrong. And I feel like that is one of the most powerful things we can possess as theater artists, because a lot can go wrong when we're on stage. Right. And um, so to not be afraid and how to make the most of the mess that might be created on a life setup or even in life. I feel like that's something that theater teaches you to not be afraid to mess up. So um, yeah, that's what I've learned from George Bernard Shaw, to not be afraid. Now, one thing, however, that I've noticed is that whenever we say I'm confident, um, I've, I've seen this in um, the few groups that I lead at church or whether it be at my workplace before or in my university, I've seen that whenever we say we're confident, there's also a little weed that grows along with confidence and that becomes, that is arrogance, where we feel like we're always right. And so please don't try and correct me. And so that becomes the biggest poison for any creative person. I feel like you're pruned so long as you're growing, right? And if you're not being pruned, if, we, if you're not pruning your plants, it's because that plant is dead. So, so long as someone's correcting you, it's because there is possibility and potential for growth. So even for the younger ones who are here now, like um, Ananya and the others, I feel like it's so important is being humble and teachable whenever we're working in a theater group because there will be your director who will correct you there will be even sometimes your co-actors who might see you doing a, a scene in, a, in the wrong manner and so you have to be humble enough to take it absorb it like a sponge and the final product is just amazing now um again talking about confidence there's something very interesting I read called pseudosciences. This is a medical, it's a disease actually. And uh, so it's called pseudosciences. Now what happens here is 
uh, whenever a woman keeps saying that she's pregnant, right? Uh, what happens is your abdomen begins to grow. It's actually proven. So if you've got doctor friends, pseudosizes, so that's what happens. Your abdomen begins to grow. There's really no explanation for it. But the fact that you keep saying it over and over yourself, your body begins to respond to it. So similarly, when we're talking about confidence, if I'm constantly saying, you know what, I'm not good enough. I, I'm, not, I'm, an, I'm not a confident person. Your body will respond to that. And so you've noticed people who think they're not confident usually have a very soft voice and even their body language exhibits the lack of confidence. And that ultimately will affect the way you perform on stage if that's where you want to go. Or even if you want to become a playwright or a director, you're leading a team. So you need to be a confident personality. So I feel like it is very important for us to speak the right things over ourselves. That's an exercise that I was taught when I did a theater workshop to start speaking good things over yourself that I can, I will, it's not too big for me, All right? So um, one, so we started this uh, theater workshop by talking about things that we don't like in general, but I've seen that it's very difficult for us to talk about things that we like about ourselves. We feel like it's very humbling to say that I don't like anything about myself. No, that's, that's, that's fake humility. You should love yourself then you can love the person around you, right? So uh, we're gonna try this little activity now. If you can quickly tell us five things that you like about yourself. And we're gonna keep doing this till the workshop ends tomorrow. Five things that you like and honor about yourself. It could be your smile. It could be some internal trait maybe that you possess, but five things that you like about yourself. Let's try this. Do you want me to start? Yeah, so that I can, I can just break the ice. So I like my crooked teeth. I don't have straight teeth. I never put braces. So I like my crooked teeth. I like my voice. Um, I like my height. I'm not too tall, but I like it. I like my height. Um, what else do I like? Um, I like my family. I love my family actually, but okay, like. And um, I, I, I like my ability maybe to write songs. That could be one, perhaps. All right, so who else would like to add now? Five things that you like about yourself. Let's, let's try and do this exercise. I think Decomser is stuck again. So who would like to start? Sharija is our guest. Oh yeah, sure. Yes, Sharija is our guest. We are all hosts here. <laughs> nothing like that yeah. nothing like that all of us are equally participating <laughs> good that's yeah. good that's good so let's let's hear sharija uh i like my confidence i like my singing i like my storytelling and and i like it when i have lots of work i like my own work yeah great Great. That's four things, I think. Oh, it's difficult to remember one. It is, it's harder, <laughs> harder than you think. Yeah. I like my friendly nature. Yeah. We're liking it as well. Thank you. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shailaja. Uh, Ms. Rashmi, would you like to speak? Yes. <clears throat> I, I like the way I can adapt myself to any kind of situation. One. Two, I think I don't get angry pretty soon. So be, being a mother and with a, in, in a home with three dogs. So I think I really give myself credit for that too. And um, three, yes, my story writing capacity, like Shali says, her storytelling. I, I go for my story writing capacity. And for my, okay, I can't take on my fingers that way. Four. For my um, capacity to, I think, remember and recollect things, retain things there, lock it up, leave it there. Yes, so that, that makes it four. And uh, five, yes, because I like myself. I like myself, yes. Wow, that's so amazing. That makes it five. And I actually envy your ability to not uh, get angered quickly. <laughs> that's something that we all could use. Amazing. Uh, I think we've lost Decomsor again, but is there anyone else among the participants who'd like to share? Sonia. Hi. Yeah, hi. hi. Yeah, amazing. Hi. So you got me thinking, you know, this is something that I always ask my students 
there what are the five things write it down and now i'm starting to think what are the five things i like about myself <laughs> I like one thing thing here one thing here tini it's so good to see you tini it's so good to see you it's good to see you too that's that's the sixth thing i like this morning <laughs> so nice i think okay. it's a good a uh, carry on carry on thank you and uh, the the one thing that i like about myself is that um, i have the power to lead and i have the power to inspire people i just really love that so much about myself and uh, the second thing that i love about myself um in fact i love everything about myself when i look at myself i people call me fat but i love this little this fatness that i have around me i just love this about myself i love my poems that i write the writings that i write i write on a lot of different topics and i simply enjoy writing those stuff i am a giver and that is why i i can give anything with both my hands so um i i love that about myself i am a lover by default and i am a giver and uh, i i can just anybody ask me anything i can just give it you know i think that's four is it sonia that's four and yes. uh, i think and i think the best thing about me is that i am not a person who is religious minded for me religion is humanity and i think uh, that is what i love about myself i really love that about myself five <laughs> amazing so impressive to see that you it, it's that easy for you to say that it, it's really important and uh, i think when we're going to do this again tomorrow we'll see that it's actually a little t- a little tough to go- come up with number 6 7 8 9 and 10 mm. and we we'll try to try and keep doing it so yeah just giving you a heads up maybe you can think about it tonight uh, so we have dikam sir with us again so would you like to share with us the five things that you like about yourself and you have to unmute again sir i got disconnected again because of the network issue i don't yeah. know this part this place somehow is bad with network but anyway has everyone done their bit then sorry do we have has everyone done um not sharing not everyone but yeah the ones who are active yes they have silaja has done huh? yeah. i missed that. i met rashmi's i got midway I midway heard Tinat and Reshma and Zaira. Have they? What about them? And uh, no, Miss Reshma has not. Is yet. She's yeah. Ah, she's let's us. back. You have to unmute yourself. I think. Yeah can you hear me? Yeah of course yeah yeah we can. Can you hear me now? Yes we can. Now we can. Yeah. Yes sir. Okay. Okay. So yes the first thing is I like my family. I like writing in fact I love writing. I like my ability to uh, get along with people. I like my ability to uh, have empathy for people and I like um I I like traveling. Is that how or of I Sonia? Yeah. Yeah. Nice okay. to see it that it came so easily to you. That's impressive. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, we've also got uh, Zaira Shah. I think wants to say something. She wants to add as well. So Zaira, if you can hear us, just got a text. I just got a message. Um, I think she must be having network issues, perhaps. So doesn't I think matter. that's it. Well, yeah. Sonia, uh, yeah. Doesn't matter. But uh, so far it's going great. Uh, I. i would like to get in at this moment to just figure out that you know when uh, uh, rashmi and especially people from the forum <laughs> like we were we were thinking of uh, 
what time frame what kind of uh, design should we have for a theater workshop online first things first i think uh, our weekend was not going very well secondly i think we should have uh, got it narrower to uh, uh, maybe two hours and not three but i am liking every moment of it but i must really thank people who are still with us so i told you it's not a very easy exercise to be a part of a theater workshop first secondly from whatever we discussed today morning it would be so nice to take them stepwise tomorrow morning whenever we start and we are since we are now a oh, few of us left we can take a call what time should be a good time tomorrow there could be surprises coming in tomorrow as well people who thought that may be busy today may be join up tomorrow or for network issues there may be people who are you know watching this live of stream in over facebook and youtube not very sure myself but yes i must i appreciate everyone's concern towards the craft it is really an exercise which demands a lot of notice especially during pandemic time now that we are still not back into our normal situation my heart goes out for all the live people who have been involved with live performances their lives have been in such a sad plight i can't help but share stories with you all but i have in discussions with a lot of few people in the country in our region around the globe and uh, well uh, to get back to the new normal will be a big challenge especially for from home it's good to know that ravindra bhavan has opened for the public although there was a capacity of about 400 people below and uh, with the balcony about 500 people but they said that you can allow 150 to 200 people for a performance we just working out on the on the on the on the rates and the likes so and it's not very affordable as it is that comes brings us to another big discussion on the, the sponsorship element for live theater apart from you know it's for live means there are a lot of takers for a singing function where you have a big name for a singing event but the moment you get a act up we've had this experience right from our tender days when we started it was a home to home collection first and then getting the entire act together with the sets hiring of lights equipment actors giving time in the rehearsal space it brings tears to my eyes if i reflect back on the times when we only got together for the simple fact that we love the craft of theater and we love the craft of live performance and no one was bothering then to you know to seek that you know how much you pay and how things have changed of late can you hear me press me can you still hear me am i audible you are audible you could be a little louder that's louder all. yeah oh, you're audible something wrong i think there's something definitely wrong with my microphones but i must tell you this experience that how difficult it was to continue the craft of creative theater from this part of the country and uh, then comes in the challenge of having uh, the theater in the vernacular and then theater in the english language it all became as a surprise for all of us because we thought you know my parents this is such an ironical situation that my parents uh, my mother's from shillong my father's from guwahati have been involved in the creative arts why i'm sharing this is for you all to have a have a better picture of how things were at the moment at that at that time and my parents made me go to a, a english medium school although we which is the new policy again bringing into place but i had the um, uh, classes in the vernacular medium homi other is my mother tongue but the thing continues that you know when it comes to performance we then studied literature in, in college here the very famous prestigious cotton college and then we got involved in theater then we realized that 
there was a gap for English theatre. Uh, I still give it away to my professors in the college, especially to one person called Projekna Babi Borua, sir, who is with us, who is no more with us. But he was the man who was instrumental in starting the Shakespeare Society inside Cotton College with a lot of people who joined from outside and then there was regular rehearsals taking place. Oh, it could have taken them three months or four months to put up a production. Because I remember productions, watching productions like The Merchant of Venice, which I again redesigned and gave it a, you know, a new kind of a flavor when I was doing workshops in various schools, uh, Assam Valley in Tezpur to make mention because we did the founders play there then. But active English theater was only the Shakespeare Society. And there were some seniors in Prabhuti Hilbi Hongo, which is my father's theater group in the 60s and then maybe late 60s and early 70s, they staged a play called The Valiant. I remember people, my father was telling me stories like the people like Ranjit Chaudhary, there were people like George Baker, who was a film star in Calcutta now. And uh, those were the people involved in the production. And that was the first English play here, apart from what happened in the tea clubs with the church and the English setting and the oil clubs in Big Boy, especially, which has a very historic stage. We are so glad, few of us, we've, we've had the chance to perform there a couple of times on invitation. Uh, thanks to thanks to Seagram's then and their magical nights. We were part of the traveling circuit of Seagram's Blender's Pride magical nights to, to promote theater in these places. But we realized that as the city was growing in the urban milieu, and we were, our parents thinking that we want our kids to become good citizens, knowledgeable citizens, were sent to an English medium school and then mostly did our education in English and then did literature per se. I speak for myself here, I never neglected my vernacular, but I saw that we were thinking in English slowly. You know, then we couldn't connect to regional humor. And uh, there were people who, you know, could connect to English humor differently. I'm talking about Guwahati per se, Assam. And there was such a struggle that, you know, when you're doing Dario Fo's Virtuous Burglar, where Tinut was there as a lead female role, well, it was so difficult to get that humor up. We could hear the laughter coming in at certain pockets. You know, if we could hear that from the wings. Although, personally, since you learning theater as a part of the academic uh, per se, then you could enjoy it more. But then from the audience perspective, it was not that. Then the magic came in, and I must take name the mention of this name here, the very dynamic, the stalwart in getting English theater a different feel in India, the man called Mahesh Tatani. I remember requesting him over a mail and then we got onto a call and then we requested him to come over to Guwahati to witness one of our productions. He was, a, he was a guest here. Then he went to Shillong. He had a lot of lovely stories to share about the Northeast. That was his first visit. We have had a couple of uh, seminars in Guwahati University, Cotton College and the likes. But why I'm bringing this point is with the Tani's plays as an Indian writing in English, First thing that as a big connect for me, the dabbling in the craft of theater was the connect with the audience. People could immediately connect and the pleasure amongst the entire crew enhanced because here we are only doing it for the public and there, there has been the connect increased. We were doing Bernard Shaw, Shakespeare and the likes. And then that made us change and change the milieu into something. You get them into local attire. Those sort of things came in. We matured a bit, although I don't claim that I'm, I'm a very mature kind of a person. I'm still not. I, I'm still a bonsai at 16 and 21, actually. Haven't grown since. And uh, I have my childish ways. I have my wicked ways. 
I my actors used to fear that entire you know saying that here comes the man now he's going to give it to us and he doesn't speak much and those sort of things and disappears after the performance god knows where he's gone we can't even ask him anything we have to wait till tomorrow so those kind of experiences really you know got us growing and i still can't uh, wait but make mention of names like uh, dabu chowdhury who was who single handedly also managed the stage craft in 30 days uh, in uh, in one of uh, my favorite productions my first production as a director uh, god knows why i had to pick that up uh, tennessee williams is a street car in desire oh my dear what days in the rehearsal space dabuda was instrumental as a part of our team got the erected the entire stage in his balcony and then got it up we mounted it up specially and there was a connect that was increasing and there were people like babita sharma who was a part of the act the present secretary of the forum dipanjal dekka janti we used to call him mr fig he was such a huge man so he was one of the, he was one of the actors in the poker scene and then i can't help but take men, men mention of names like monmouri bordloy and babita played blanche blanche du bois and uh, subhash goswami my very dear friend senior in the college shakespeare society days who's presently in london uh, his wife uh, considering those at the theater marriages and the likes you know uh, so all these people got involved only for the love of the craft and that was one production i still can you know i can't help but you know keep it deep within as a very warm embrace towards the craft and then we sailed on with dario fo's virtues burglar where george baker's son david baker who's another very fantastic actor playing the lead against tinat in that play and some day it will be so nice to get them all back on the stage to you know come back to productions we did where is will again and then we dabbled with miro gavran's uh, uh, croatian playwright who has a gavran fest and i think one of the live he's still alive and he has a fest going in his name gavran fest and we we'll try to make it one day very soon there we did our women uh, those are fantastic actors there were seven women in the play you can imagine what i had to what i went through a lot of love and regard and respect to, to all of them but to handle them differently uh, i can't help but take mention of one of my you know they all favorites but there's a different kind of a feel with people like uh, ji chalia you know who handles a, a tea brand here the very famous legacy legacy they run on uh, on tea gardens and uh, tea manufacturing units korangani tea i can't help uh, days with him on the theater space and a fantastic lead female actor that i worked with jula shoki uh, jula barwa as now jula barwa has been fantastic uh, you know uh, grace on the stage so these people gave in a different kind of a flavor then uh, my my another theater marriage of kinds i got married to rudrakshi match then match bhuya now who was there in the stage i had my sister kannaki we call her very fondly me mother got a break out of the theater productions we did it was all like a home production you know home factory but uh, yes it got in a change i think from what i gather from others that it changed the milieu of the city growing city then and we had to run special shows and then comes in like i said about the datani factor the indian writing in english special connect although we remember i still remember connecting with uh, the language per se and then we thought that there are a lot of organizations and theater amateur groups professional groups doing plays in the vernacular but there was none who did plays in english and there were a lot of takers and if some people are still ask me that why do i do plays in english well i do plays also in the vernacular like i did mathu city with two stalwarts from the region both theater and you know stage and film personalities both president award winning directors like sanjeev hazorika uh, very fondly we call him sanjeev da and uh, hantona borloy i can't help but take these names they have been a, a fantastic guiding force for my development in this craft and i was so glad that they agreed to you know be in the theater space with me and i was then very 
tender in age and very naughty as well. <laughs> and I'm still very naughty. <laughs> and uh, I, will, I still like that connect, but they said that it's, it would be nice to work with you together. And these two stalwarts are already big names. You know, I, I can't tell you because of the paucity of time, what uh, courage I garnered to go and request them to be a part of my production. And that's when we did Albert Ramsel Gurney's uh, love letters, adapted it, uh, and then again, translated the whole thing into Assamese, which very, very fondly and in a very nice manner was done by Sanjeev Hazarika. And he played the lead against Kantona uh, Bordele. What, what a production that was. And then the last one, which took a lot of hard work and a lot of thinking, eight years of thinking before the film came up, was what Sonia was telling you all about, about who is Mantu. I got a couple of stories up, the Mala, then there were people like Ranjeev Lal Borwa who was there with me in my previous product productions. These are people who actually made a difference and made me what I am today. You know, I give it all to my fantastic crew, my cast. And then comes this very young dynamic Sonia who played two different roles. I, I must tell you this, uh, this is what is the brilliance of an actor in a theater space when they come in and say that, can we do this like this? And that's what you look forward to. And that's very special, Sonia. I shouldn't be telling it on her face, but you know, that's when the, she came in many a times to say that, let me try this part this way. Well, why not? And she opened up, she came in for Park Bench Blues and she opened up Who is Manto? Silence in the hall, intimate space, walks in a you know, young kind of a person in a Jainsam. And she says, I'm from Shillong, but I just heard that there are, there's a play on Manto happening. Uh, two very favorite people involved. One is Manto himself. I am doing research from the University of Heidelberg in Germany. I'm from Shillong and I also know DCOM very well. So I thought I should come in and, you know, tell you a bit about, uh, bit, a bit about what I have been doing about Manto abroad in Germany in the University of Heidelberg as a research scholar. And she gave in such a sweet, brief manner about People who didn't know, here there were people who didn't know who was Manto then, knew all about him in about a couple of minutes. And then she said, now I'm sorry, I have just barged in like that, but uh, now it's time for you to enjoy the performance. Good evening and thank you. And she walks away, you know, and then she gears up to be this fantastic 70 year old person, lady in the park. So, so it really, you know, brings me, it brings me so much of happiness to tell you about every time I talk about <clears throat> the theater stories. And why I don't risk uh, talking about these things very often in a public space or even in uh, interviews, especially uh, on air and the like, because uh, it gets me very emotional. And, <clears throat> and uh, uh, fond memories and the likes. So I avoid talking about my old productions and the craft in particular, because then uh, I will have to just stop talking and, you know, then you'll have to enjoy the silence for that matter. It gets me very, very emotional and very happy emotional moments, but I just can't help but go forward after that. So that's the reason I tend to avoid meeting a lot of people after the production. And the rehearsal space, uh, I am all for them till I hand over the play on the final day and they take it forward. It's their baby after that. So these are a few things that I thought I will share with all of you so that someday you'll be able to you know, share the same. And uh, the kick that I derive out of theater has actually kept me going so far. Like I said, with my two parallel lifestyles that I've led, two very special lives. And uh, for 30 years, well, I have undergone a period of sobriety. As of now, there's very limited people who are theater lovers. So it's a nice way of sharing. And it also gives you a lot of confidence. But I've been going through a lot of a period of sobriety of late and that's really also helped uh, manifold but i i don't remember sleeping properly as sleeping sleeping uh, for 30 years and uh, it feels good and i was uh, also very you know very difficult to share these kind of things but i've also tried to give away and thanks to the pandemic i don't know a lot of damage has been done a lot of conscious efforts have been come during the pandemic but uh, Personally, if you ask me, uh, this was a period where I thought it's high time that I get a little sober. 
and uh, more than the alcohol bit, it was actually the smoking that uh, I'm very happy myself that I have been, you know, staying away. And I, I'm, I'm not, I don't promise anything because I don't know what will happen. Because, uh, like they say in AA, that uh, it's a very different kind of a disease. But uh, I'm so glad that I'm alive and I'm talking to you all at the moment. I'm looking forward to have more kind of theatre productions and uh, in a very intimate manner. And it actually gets you going. Uh, so thanks to this pandemic situation. And uh, I'm loving every bit. I only now like to reflect again when things get better and uh, where people get more healthier and things get better and we get back to a live performance per se. I look, I still wait very eagerly for those moments. And uh, before we bring Sonia in towards the last part, and also Jack, who's there from the Writers Forum, uh, I actually would like to ask all of you that there's a few special people who are here, that what we should do tomorrow, we had plans of speaking up uh, the entire exercise in groups and the likes, that was what me and Sonia had discussed. But we would like to take your tips and uh, you all can, you all, please feel free to, uh, like Saleja can be more free with Brush Me and, you know, over the day, you all can take a call. And if you think that it's nice to go on tomorrow with whatever we had planned for all of you, and if there are people who want to join us tomorrow that we will know, Cause tomorrow, like it's a live act, and uh, maybe we we were thinking of giving all the participants a sort of a workshop certificate, a digital certificate of the emails that can be discussed. And uh, like I said, uh, it was very nice to have all of you here. And uh, tomorrow we can start off with our breathing exercises and a few more that we had planned. I personally. Uh, we wanted to show you two small videos, but I think I'm going to show you one today and then I'm going to leave the floor for Sonia to wind up. But uh, yes, please take a call about the activities tomorrow. And should we reduce it to two hours? Because we were not very sure how it would go. Uh, she won't be able to join tomorrow, Rashmi, that I could see that there. And uh, Salajah is the key host there. Oh, wow. That's nice. So we should take a call then uh, from the forum side, what, what, uh, how we should go ahead with it. But uh, we'll, we'll see uh, the list of participants in the morning. And then we'll, Sonia, you and I will take a call. And if we can want to make it into a tighter event, we'll make it tighter. And uh, Tina, if uh, Tina's there, then we will also ask her that if they will be take this tomorrow, to be a part of the session since it's virtual. I totally agree that a theater workshop in person when you register and put in the fee and you, you know, uh, maybe make arrangements like the family with uh, two breaks, a snackaroo break, and then lunch, it becomes a different ball game. Virtually, it's, it's, it's a different ball game, my first kind, where we don't have much of controls and, uh, you know, we don't have that kind of order like we normally do in a theater workshop. So all those things are there, but uh, we will take a call definitely. And I would request uh, Jack and Rashmi Vado to take this lead and keep us posted, me and Sonia, on what how we should go ahead tomorrow. And uh, we definitely will take a call once we get to see the participants in the morning. But, uh, and before we leave the floor for Sonia to wind up, these are the things that we will take up tomorrow. Like I said, it's a very, very difficult exercise. Theater workshop is not like other workshops. Uh, it actually is a lot of rigorous action and uh, dedication and a lot of involvement from deep within, like all of you have shared today. Thank you so very much for being a part of our happiness. I'm going to quickly tune into a video to see what kind of hard work goes in just even saying a couple of lines. Patterson Joseph, who played Shylock and is part of the Guardian set, this is what I also show a lot of my young uh, theater lovers. And uh, they, they get a lot of inspiration from these kind of actors. Uh, this is a clip which is of 1 minute 43 seconds. But you will see how he treats Shylock. 
and in a very simple manner with his, with his just uh, the basic uh, appearance level, the passport size. That's what he does with his twitches, his eyes, and his style of delivery. For all of us who are still with us, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Sonia, do you think I can share my screen? Uh, yes, sir, it should yeah. be able to, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to quickly okay. take you to Patterson Joseph and a fantastic actor. And uh, I'm sure all of you will love that to wind up this day. And over then I'll give it over to Jack and Sonia to wind up today. There you go. Senior Antonio. Many a time and oft in the Rialto, you have rated me about my monies and my use sentences. Still have I borne it with a patient shrug, for sufferance is the badge of all our tribe. You call me misbeliever, cut through the dog, spent upon my Jewish gabardine, and all the means of that which is mine own. Well, then it now appears you need my help. Go to then, you come to me, and you say, Shylock, we would have money. Say so. You that did void your room upon my beard and mock me as you spurn a stranger cur of your threshold. Money is as your suit. What should I say to you? So that was Joseph Patterson with Shylock. And so that is that kind of a, you know, depth, in-depth exercise it demands out of an actor. And I'm sure all of you have loved watching live performances and you've been a part of the theater activity. No wonder. That's why you're here. But uh, I'm going to thank all of you once again from the core of my heart for, you know, getting here today. And... Uh, Northeast Writers Forum for making this possible for all of us. The thanks to the lovely Sonia for taking the time out of her busy schedule as well to help all of us get across this workshop. And like I said, we will take a call tomorrow morning itself again. But uh, I thank all of you for at least allowing me to share in the, past, in the future that I've also done during the pandemic, something that I love, an exercise called theater online, the virtual way. Thank you so much. Over to you, Sonia. Yeah, please go ahead, Ms. Shaila Jha. I think you yeah, have Thank you all so much. It was lovely meeting you and getting to know you a little, if not too much, but it was a wonderful experience. Unfortunately, I won't be able to join tomorrow, but still I was tempted to join. So I messaged Rashmi asking her, can I just join for a day? So she said, okay, fine, you won't be able to get the certificate. It's okay. I just want to be there. You'll get it. You'll get it for sure. <laughs> oh, my dear, look at me. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone, have, Rashmi, by the way, you want to say something? And we'll ask Peanut and then we'll put, go, go, put it back to Sonia. Then. I want to listen to y'all speaking. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I've. I haven't done so much of speaking in three thousand years that I'm alive. Today is the most that I've spoken in three thousand years plus that I'm alive. <laughs> I haven't spoken so much, by no. Three thousand twenty-seven years, I haven't spoken so much like I've done today. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Well, thank you so much, Tina. Do you want to say something? We, we are actually running up for the day. I really want to come back tomorrow. And yes. I, I, I really want to attend your workshop again because learning with you, it's like a lifetime of uh, a lesson, you know. I, and, and I have never forgotten what you have taught me the first time. 
So the breathing exercises, the mapping of the stage and everything. It's been so fantastic working with you. So I want to come back again tomorrow. And I'll rise and take a bow on that, Tina. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Okay. Very Sonia? Yeah, I, um, I think Sir has already said so much and um, just want to add a little bit. For me personally, it's really been an honor because I see that a lot of you who are here are veterans and I'm not half as experienced as you are, but uh, hopefully mm -hmm. I, I hope to get there someday. But uh, for me, this has been more of a learning experience and uh, to contribute in whichever little way I can, share a little bit that I've learned from the mistakes I've made and from uh, the experiences that I've had with wonderful people like uh, Decom Sir and the Fashion Collection as well. Um, so I just want to share one thing about working with uh, Decom Sir and the Passion Collective and which I've seen is very important, um, you know, to succeed as leaders or theater persons, whatever it may be. Um, apart from the skills that he possesses when it comes to dialogue delivery or expressions and stuff like that, I, I think you would have, you would all agree with me when I say that humility is one thing that really um, sets Decom Sir apart. And uh, he, he keeps saying this, no, I, I am I'm very underaccomplished and, uh, you know, I haven't done much, but um, it, it's really just a humble heart. And so I really honor that, sir. So thank you. And um, all of you, even Rashmi Nazri, ma'am, and Shaila Jha, ma'am, all of you who are here, um, the humility is something that has really stood out to me about each of you and something that I hope to imbibe as well. And another thing that I really liked about working in the Passion Collective was punctuality. Rehearsals would mean 5 p.m. And if I would reach at 5.01, that's late. So I, I love that about working with the Passion Collective, that if you're early, you're on time. And if you're on time, you're already late. You know, so that I feel is something that we really need to take away from this punctuality. Very important, not just for theater persons, but for just succeeding in whatever it is that we're doing. So I love that about the Passion Collective and honor. That is another thing that each of the uh, crew members of the Passion Collective possess. I was, I think, probably one of the youngest. I mean, we were all young, but there were also uh, veterans like uh, Jeet Chalia and others who were a part of the play. And we were still, we still had the freedom to come and give our inputs, like Sir said, you know, but not everybody gives you that. I've worked with a few other people and um, they, they don't really want to listen to what you have to say because your experience doesn't count. I'm like 30 years ahead of you. But with Decom Sir, that's not been there. And I think that childlike nature that he has is why he's still growing and learning. And, and that's what's taking him ahead and making him different. So thank you, sir, for teaching us all of these valuable lessons. That's way more than just the stage. You know, that's something that I've carried with me like even now. Um, it's been two years already since we did the play, but those values have stuck with me. So I love that. So hopefully we'll do many more plays um, in the years to come. And uh, we'll maybe learn to even use the screen in a better way. Hopefully we'll get ideas. Theater persons are always creative. So we'll make the most of the pandemic as well. Let's have another workshop maybe in the months to come. So thank you. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. We'll miss you, Shaila Jamam. Yeah, yeah we, we, we will. So we like. So much for being a part of our happiness. You've been wonderful as always. What a delight. Thank you, Jack, for getting the connections up for all of us and being the guard, the sentinel for all of us. And like I said, I was just remembering that the names that I have taken, if I have missed out on some names, uh, please uh, forgive me on uh, that exercise about, uh, you know, who are the actors who are involved. Devashish, who's in Bombay now, was another very special, you know, act with us. Devashish Sharma. How can I forget him? Mokon. And all of them are very, very special. You know, I might have just dropped a few names, but uh, as of now, like I told you, that's why I don't do much of talking because I miss out on things and I get emotional. So these are the ways and means to stay silent and, you know, make the most out of it. And I would like to just end by the way I started by saying that act the way you'd like to be and soon you'll be the way you act. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we're looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Thank you, Ms. Reshma, for joining us. Thank you, Ms. Rashmi. Such a pleasure to meet you. Sonia, we'll get on a call later in the yeah, day. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Sonia, yeah. you are the host. You have to end the meeting. Yeah. I'll, should I end it for all? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay Thank happy. You. Stay, happy. Stay happy. Stay happy. You too. You